Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll begin. Hi, I'm Steve Thompson. I'm president of Emory Thompson Machine, and this is our uh, Make It Fresh class. Uh, we're going to be producing six new videos today that will take us up from the uh, 382 that we already have. This is Jeff Markow, who owns uh, Mystic Ices and Ice Cream in Fruit Loops, Florida. And uh, Jeff and I have been doing this for many, many years, and uh, Jeff also runs a uh, boot camp, ice cream boot camp that preceded this class uh, where people for the last two days uh, were uh, making ice cream in his store, serving uh, people, uh, learning about the ingredients, uh, waxing his uh, Corvette, Don't his Jeep, go. and, and uh, just really learning the business. Um, so he, he really gives you the business uh, at his <laughs> course. So anybody who wants to know about that course, you can uh, contact Jeff. A uh, very odd spelling. It's X Hippie, uh, which is X H I P P E E at AOL, or you can call Emory Thompson and we'll tell you about it. So, we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing I want to make today is a little different take on Italian ice. Um, I need one, so I go. There we go. And uh, usually, uh, everything that you see in my videos, uh, I, I do it differently from everyone else. My way costs a little more, uh, but I have lines of people at, at customers' stores to buy this product. Anybody can make a product that's cold and will cool you off and you can sell it at Yankee Stadium. Uh, we want a product that people seek you out and will stand in line to get. And the difference is only a few pennies. On a um, three-gallon tub, uh, I could make this to sell uh, to a captive audience, a fair, a festival, a stadium. Uh, I, I could make this uh, for about uh, $5.50. And at uh, 2 dollars or $3 a scoop, I'm making several hundred dollars uh, off of this. Or I can make it using fresh ingredients, which we're going to do today. Uh, and it'll bump the cost to about nine dollars and even then that's selling it buying the, all the ingredients retail at the supermarket if you uh, become a conscientious shopper you can uh, easily knock a dollar dollar fifty off of that so the bottom line is Italian ice is just pure profit we have a question already this one is two and a half uh, I have three gallons here and you won't be able to tell the difference the uh, two and a half has a taper and the three is a full size and it really doesn't matter which one you use, it's personal taste and where you can get the best price. Uh, so normally my lemon ice formula is sugar, water, and lemon juice. That's, that's my secret formula. And uh, in fact, if you want to write it down, you can see the video at emerythompson.com and all my uh, formulas are there. Um, it's uh, on the bigger machine that Jeff's going to use, the 24 quart. It's seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of fresh squeezed lemon juice. So I was out here yesterday afternoon at 2.30 in the ice cream room here <laughs> squeezing 24 lemons. Not what I heard. <laughs> no, I did it. Um, and Italian ice uh, also has a bunch of different names. It's known as, in New York, we call it Italian ice. You go down the Jersey Turnpike, and it's called Italian water ice. Um, you can, uh, it's also in a fine French restaurant. It would be called lemon sorbet. A fine, French, a fine Italian restaurant, it would be lemon sorbetto. Uh, up in Boston, they call it slushy or slush. Uh, and in the um, um, markets like um, we sell to Universal Studios and Disney and SeaWorld and Six Flags, uh, they call it frozen lemonade. It's basically sugar, water, and flavor. And, um, and there's just slight variations on it. 7-Eleven like Slurpee? Uh, no, uh, they just call it slush or slushy. It's not like 7-Eleven Slurpee because that's just uh, corn syrup, water, and artificial color and artificial flavor. We don't stoop that low, and not even the, the wholesale people stoop that low. Um, so uh, the, the main difference, though, is people call up and say, well, I prefer a Philadelphia ice. Sam, Paula, she's in here. You can come get her. Sammy has, our golden retriever is roaming around in the back that you can't see. Um, New York ice is different from a Philadelphia ice. The Philadelphia ice is smoother. And uh, the secret to that is that there is one pound more sugar in a Philadelphia ice. So instead of 
seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, two quarts of lemon juice. It's eight pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of lemon juice. And that's the only difference. Uh, also, sometimes when you're making a flavor, like we're going to make um, a pumpkin ice cream later, and I've put down to add a little more sugar. Uh, it's not necessarily, adding a little bit more sugar is not necessarily going to make it sweeter. Uh, it oftentimes will make the flavor pop. So if you've got kind of a bland flavor like pumpkin, I'm hoping to bring the flavor out a little stronger by adding a little bit of sugar, sugar uh, to the recipe. So anybody's secret formulas are all based on my general formulas uh, that are at the website and they're all for free. Uh, Jeff and I were talking about this uh, this morning that uh, since the two of us started this, uh, we have had the attitude, Jeff with his uh, classes and me with building machinery, we give everything away for free. We, we teach you everything we know about how to make ices, ice cream, gelato, sorbets, dairy-free ice cream. We can talk about paleo ice cream today if you want. Uh, <laughs> all these different products. We give it all away for free, and it, I think it's a pretty good sales marketing tool because, quite frankly, everything is about selling. And instead of the way uh, I used to do it back in the Bronx, well, you, if you buy a machine, I'm going to come over and I'm going to teach you how to make ice cream. No, we're going to teach you how to make ice cream and ices and all the other products before you spend a dime. That way, your natural instinct is going to be, hey, those guys taught me everything I need to know, where to buy dipping cabinets, where to get flavors, what size scoop do I use, all for free. Why would I go to anyone else? I mean, they're really there to help us. So that's our goal today. And that's enough talking. So I've never made this before. Uh, I'm going to use honey instead of uh, cane sugar. And Jeff is the honey expert. I, I tried to make something with honey once before. In fact, I still have it. Um, I, I bought some honey. This, this stuff was $1.98 uh, for a 55-gallon drum. And it tasted like it was $1.98 for a 55-gallon drum. Now this is $25.98. Wow. But as you'll hear Jeff say today, uh, and he'll prove his point very nicely, it doesn't matter what the ingredients cost. What matters is the quality is so exceptional to everybody else, you're going to have lines out the door. But he'll go into that. Uh, in great detail. So how much, oh, we're going to do a half batch today, we said. Uh, so we're going to use. You have the juice of 24? 24 lemons, yeah. Okay, here's your water. Yeah. Four quarts. Four quarts. And then we'll uh, do we'll uh, honey to, to taste. Okay, so I'm going to start with. Because the machine will mix it for us. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you were talking about your honey. I use honey too, but. What is the difference between probably your clover honey and my wildflower honey? There's hundreds of different honeys, hundreds, maybe thousands of different honeys, because as we know, it's the only sustainable product on the planet that won't go bad. It lasts forever. Uh, you, you really have to go by taste uh, with honey. Uh, today we're going to use wildflower honey, okay, that's what I uh, but the other one that I had was sourwood honey, mm -hmm. and uh, there's just a million different kind of honeys. Uh, so yeah, it's taste. That's all. Okay. So this is all clean, sanitized, ready to go. Uh, this is my CB350. It makes six quarts at a time. Making sure the gate's closed. Why? Because the last thing I did was pour water in here to sanitize it. And so I left the gate open. So first problem, I'm going to teach you also the problems that you might run into. I mean, when you first learned how to drive a car, unless you're a millennial today, uh, the first thing your parents taught you was how to change the tire, just in case you've got to change the tire. So I'm going to teach you how to change the tire. Um, and so it, part of that is the last thing we did was we had water in here for sanitizing. We're going to close the gate. Otherwise, I'm going to be pouring it in, and it's going to come all falling out, and you're going to curse me. He makes a machine that leaks, the whole works. No, the gate's open. So simple stuff like that. Did you say six or six and a half quarts? Six quarts. That's the rated capacity. It actually makes a little bit more. Ooh, nice pour. Thank you.
the lemon juice is conspicuously absent. That's because it's conspicuously in the uh, refrigerator. So let me go get it. Yes. All right. When you're using sugar versus honey, what's the ratio? We have no idea. Oh, good. Never made uh, uh, lemon ice with honey instead of sugar. Never done it. Okay. But we were talking the other night, and we thought we lemon ice. He's the king of lemon ice, and we always make it. But let's try with honey. See what happens. Uh, actually, he asked me. We wanted to use honey today as a theme, so what fruit would go good with honey? And I, we hung up the phone, and I'm thinking and talking to my wife and thinking and thinking. You know, honey strawberry, honey cherry, no good. And then, honey lemon. It's, it's so perfect. Uh, so we'll give it a shot. Did Sammy leave? Because the honey and the ice are probably not going to break up with me. I better go. No, you uh -huh. won't. The, the consistency will be fine. Yeah. It, it should be just smooth as silk. The taste, we're going to have to experiment. And since this machine is going to be spinning internally at 234 revolutions per minute, it's the world's best mixer. So we'll add the water, we'll add the lemon juice, and then we'll add honey to taste. And when we get the taste we think is good, we stop adding honey. Okay. It's not scientific, but remember, you get into this business for three reasons. You get into it for profit, of course. The second one is art. There's an art to this. Even if you follow all the recipes, there's an art to it. You'll tweak it, you'll want more bananas, less lemons, more strawberries, whatever. So, and the third reason is fun. This is the most fun business in the world. Oh, sorry. Yeah, even if you can be in the worst mood in the world walking into an ice cream parlor, but I guarantee you're going to walk out in a good mood. So that's, okay. that's nice to be in All a, the lemon juice. Well, this is, no, this is one quart right here. And then, we, so we're just putting in a quart. Which is from 24 lemons, both of them? Both of them. Well, throw them in. We I can don't offset it with honey. <laughs> You say so. Steve gets nervous when, <laughs> when Frankenstein starts creating. <laughs> Four quarts of water, right? Yes. It's in there. Okay. Well, we can always add more. So, let's, let's hold on to it. We'll add the honey and then go from okay. there. Because otherwise we can fuse them. Close it up. Turn it on. Let's start mixing. All right. So I'm No hit, sugar I'm is in there. Touching the infinite overrun to Italian ice. Start. And now it's spinning. There's no refrigeration on. It's not, uh, it's not getting cold. It's just uh, mixing at the moment. What would happen if you forgot to put sugar or honey in? Uh, if I forgot <laughs> to put sugar in or honey, it would freeze up like a block of ice. And the machine will stop itself. A little voice comes on and says, shame on you. <laughs> no, it doesn't really. Time on Saturday, you really blew Remember, it. Remember, all the time. Focus. You must focus, otherwise you'll forget. The other day, we almost forgot. Uh, what did we almost forget? See, I forgot what we almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Making ice cream or ices during your busiest time when your all hands on deck are needed for scooping ice cream doesn't make sense. You want to make it at say 9:30 in the morning. But that, uh, sometimes you have to make it when there's a crowd. In fact, Swenson's Ice Cream Parlors in San Francisco, back in the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s, always made at least a batch of ice cream on Saturday night at 7.30 and Sunday night at 7.30, uh, because they knew it drew the crowds. You can't have children and just sit at home and watch Netflix all day long. You gotta, they want to do something. So let's go out to, instead of Dairy Queen or some other bland place, they say, let's go out to Jeff's uh, Mystic Ice and get an ice cream. Because uh, we know old man Markow's coming out at uh, 7.30 and he's got a tub of something he just made fresh and he's giving out free samples of it. Now you're providing entertainment and, uh, and you're selling the product. If you walk around uh, this building, you'll see, looking into all the offices, a lot of big picture windows. Everybody can see what's going on. I took that directly from Swenson's because Swenson's was called Swenson's See Us Freeze and you could go up to the window and, and watch them making ice cream. 
more entertainment, more proof that it's homemade. So if it works into your store, it's great fun. Now I have to disagree a little bit. I think my philosophy is you can never make ice cream while you're open, while the store is open. Because all you need is this much distraction and your formula is messed up, you forget to pull it, you pull it too soon, too late. There's so many things that can go wrong. So in my shop, never ice cream is made while, the, while we're open. He's not wrong. We give on every machine lifetime technical support and you can reach us nights, weekends, holidays, uh, just about any time, uh, up in, from six in the morning till 10 at night. Uh, and the most common thing that I hear on weekends is I froze the machine up, what do I do? And uh, it's very simple. You unplug it from the wall and you open it up and you take everything out and start over. Uh, and then everything will be fine. But uh, the easiest thing to do, and I don't even have one right now, go buy a cheap kitchen timer. And if the batch is gonna take, say, 14 minutes for ices, eight minutes for ice cream, set it for two minutes earlier. And you can even walk around with it in your pocket. But when that buzzer goes off, hey, I've got two minutes to get back to my machine and check on it. So it's really that simple. We do not put automatic shutoffs on these machines. I know Capigiani and the other people do, and they don't work. And the reason they don't work is because they're assuming every flavor has the same freezing time. The more Jeff puts into this, uh, the more honey, the longer the freezing time. So strawberry ice cream uh, is getting more sweetness than vanilla because of the strawberries. Strawberries are sweet. That's extra sugar to the formula. Your freezing time goes from eight minutes to maybe eight and a half or nine. I don't want a machine that always cuts off at eight minutes because 99% uh, of the time the product's not ready and I gotta turn it back on. Hi, welcome. How is it, Jeff? Perfect? I think it's pretty, you wanna try right. it? Well, you try it. All right. More honey? A little sweeter, and a maybe sweeter. a little bit more lemon. Well, <laughs> that's gonna offset. I know, but I wanna, I wanna, uh, I think a little more sweeter, I wanna up the flavor a bit. Okay. You don't care how you spend my money? No, not at all. Okay, now we're gonna turn on the refrigeration switch. Whoa. Well, well, oh, I well, tested. Well, I, okay. okay if you're so here we go, we turn that on. And I'll just have to watch it because I don't even have my cell phone on me. You want? Oh, yeah, okay, if you'll give me uh, 10 minutes. Thanks. Any questions so far? Yes. Does this have to go to a batch freezer? I mean, a blast freezer after it's made? Um, does this have to go into a blast freezer? It has to go into a cold freezer, but not a blast freezer. Uh, the audience can't see it. What do you I mean, the uh, camera can't see it, but off to my right is a uh, Home Depot uh, chest freezer. That's a great place to put Italian ice. Off to my left is a bonafide flash freezer that goes to 30, 40 below. That's a great place to put ice cream. So it really comes down to what you can afford. Most everybody starts off with a batch freezer and a couple of uh, chest freezers. And then as volume goes up, uh, you're making more money, you have the option of getting a flash freezer or better yet, the best option is a walk-in because uh, you can run my machinery 10, 24 hours a day and in developing countries that's exactly what they do. They're paying low wages, they run them 24 hours a day. Uh, but once you fill up your freezer space, you can't make any more ice cream because you have no place to put it. So when the customer calls up in a year and a half and says, I'm running my machine uh, eight hours a day, and uh, I, I, I need bigger machinery. I go, no you don't, you need more freezer space because you could run it 16 hours a day. You could run it 20 hours a day, but once you fill up the freezers, there's nowhere to go. You can't make it and just let it sit here. Yes? You talk about shelf life for ice cream. How long can it stay in the freezer? Uh, it can stay in the freezer for three or four months. Uh, for ice cream and Italian ices, about uh, a month and a half. But you have to ask yourself a more important question about than what the shelf life is. If you're making, as my, I always use my example, 
If you're wondering if your bubblegum licorice ice cream that's been in the freezer for four months is any good, technically the answer is yes, it's as good as the day you made it. <coughs> but if it's sitting in there for four months, the public is telling you, we don't like bubblegum licorice ice cream, it's a lousy flavor, get rid of it. If you can't turn over your inventory, you're not selling the right product. And, and it's, it's really that simple. Uh, sure, there can be mistakes. Yes? The tile that you use for the smaller machines is the same for the 24 quart? You can use any size tub that you want on these machines. This is a gelato pan. This is a six liter gelato pan. And this usually fits into a, in a cabinet into a stainless steel holder. The stainless steel holder is very expensive. These are very cheap and uh, I reuse them. So uh, I, I buy these by the hundreds and uh, I like it because it's gonna match this machine, this plus a little extra. But you can use, Jeff uses the Cambro, which if you come up later, this is just beautiful solid plastic and it's got increments on it. Uh, he uses these exclusively uh, because uh, it's a nice amount of ice cream to scoop as opposed to the old fashioned way. Uh, my machines are rated on these, two and a half or three gallon tubs, and this machine is going to make two of these uh, maximum in one batch. This is going to make one of these in one batch. So it comes down to uh, time and money. This is, I don't think we can give prices on uh, the internet because of um, the, the restrictions, but the, all my prices are at my website. But this machine is less than half the cost of this. So if you have the money and the need and you want to cut your labor, you buy a bigger machine. If you want to get into business, you buy this. This is the largest selling machine in the world because it's the best priced and it will do absolutely everything that the bigger ones will do. Does it take the same amount of time to uh, make it in a bigger machine than that? It's identical on these uh, for ice cream. The Italian ice is a couple of minutes longer in the bigger machine because it's such a big volume of sugar water. But on Italian ice, the key, the, the key to it is we're literally making wet cement. Uh, anybody can make ice cream, but Italian ice is just so heavy and so dense that it'll just twist out their dashers. This is the 24 quart dasher. I've got a couple of spring clips on it so it doesn't come apart, but that baby's heavy. That's really heavy. That's all stainless steel. And the Delrin blades, while everybody else is changing their blades every six months, we go five years. Five years before we have to even think about doing the blades. That's Jeff's machine. Uh, my machine running today is this one. So everything is the same designs. Uh, and the same functions, and I gotta tell you, that's really hurting my wrist to hold it like that. It's, it's heavy. I'll pass it around. The springs, uh, they're spring-loaded so that no matter how old the blades get, they're still gonna act as if they're today brand new because the springs are pushing them out. So uh, the reason it's holding together right now is just a couple of safety springs, but normally you would just put it together and run it, but I'll pass that around. Italian ice in this machine takes 18 minutes, this one takes about 14 minutes. Yes? Question for Jeff. Jeff, um, your honey that you, pur that you purchase, um, do, you, uh, do you buy it in bladders or how do you get it? I, do. I buy it from a beekeeper in Georgia and he sells it in bladders. Uh, that's how they come. Uh, when he uh, called me, I had to quickly uh, get that, so I went on Amazon to get that uh, because it's good quality honey, but normally for, in bladders from Georgia. And the guy's on eBay. Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, but if you go on eBay and you'll see him, he's uh, just he sells bulk honey in bladders from Georgia. He's the beekeeper. Yes, sir. How much honey are you up to right now? What was that, 32 ounces? That's five pounds. Honey is sold in pounds, even oh. though it's it's sort of a liquid. It's always sold by weight. So we use probably four and a half pounds of honey. Yeah. So the, the formula would be 24 lemon, a quart of lemon juice, uh, four quarts of water, and four and a half pounds of honey. But remember, honey is going to vary. You know, certain honeys are much sweeter than others.
Any other questions? So, yes. So, sorry for being late. So I don't know if you already uh, talked about it. So um, how long takes the, the first batch of ice cream in the big machine? Well, that's it's an impossible question to answer. I'll answer it how we did in class. We talked about it. The first batch of anything of the day, the first batch will take longer than subsequent batches because the machine isn't cold yet. Uh, and how long does it take? I, I gave them each a hundred recipes yesterday and each one will be different in time, depending upon the ingredients. The more sugar, the more alcohol, the more sweeteners of any kind, the longer the batch will take. If you just pour in the bladder of uh, mix, ice cream mix, giving you bland vanilla ice cream. It's probably, in this machine, a 10 quart bladder is probably seven and a half minutes. And you've got, I'm sorry? The following one, four to five? Yes, but if you then decide to make cherry vanilla on the next batch and add maraschino cherries and some cherry juice, now you're gonna go to nine and a half minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, so it, it, every batch, every recipe, you've got a hundred recipes I gave you, the time, you can't put the time on it. And that's why it's so important to focus. Uh, how many times did I use that word in the last couple of days? You must focus. If the store is open and you're suddenly making a plain F chocolate or plain vanilla or whatever, then it's going to take much less time. So before you know it, the ice cream's done and you didn't account for that. So uh, it's just every batch is different. Every single batch is different in time. And that's why there's no timer on the machine. If you put a timer on these machines, it's a false positive. You, you're going you're gonna to rely on it when you shouldn't. Uh, and when you pull the ice cream, when, it, when you feel it's ready, uh, he pulls it different than I do. You know, I tend to pull it sooner, he pulls it later. A texture sensor on the machine? A what? A texture, a texture sensor that tells you when it's ready? No, it can't be. Yeah, but sometimes you could have a, a gradual uh, dial when you are telling the machine to tell you when it's the texture. And they don't, and they don't work. No. Uh, I can't. invented that back in 1975, and we didn't give it a fancy name like a sensor. We called it an amp meter. And I was selling some machines. They did not sell well because everybody goes, well, what do I need that for? The way any sensor works is it's measuring the load on the motor. When you're making, when you put a liquid in and you're turning it into a semi-solid, the, the load on the motor goes up. So that's fine, we're gonna be longer. Um, so it's the, the amperage is going up. So I had a amp meter on here. Capigiani took the idea and called it the Hardomatic <laughs> for many years, and then they changed it to the Hardotronic, and it still doesn't work because all it's doing is telling you the load on the motor. It doesn't take into account that strawberry ice cream is never gonna come out as thick as uh, vanilla ice cream because of the density of the strawberries and everything else. It's, it's a fool's game. I have been building, my family's been building these for 115 years. We can put any gadget on it. Nobody else has the infinite overrun control. Nobody else has cast stainless steel doors. All these things are incredibly innovative, but I don't put junk on my machines. And if you talk to people who have machines with junk on them, you're gonna find out that that little control, whatever that control is, takes down the whole machine. The whole machine is down. Um, that, and that doesn't happen with an Emory Thompson. You can still keep running no matter what because it's dead simple. This is, I mean, if you're baking a cake, if you're a baker, you do not, you set your timer for 22 minutes, you put in your cakes, you don't come back afterwards and immediately take out 20, the, the, all the cakes. You test the cake because every cake is different for density or quality. So I look at this stuff and I just laugh and I say, you just keep making it your way and that's why we've got 90% of the business because we do it simple and honest. This is the way you make ice cream. You actually have to look at it and this is coming along nicely. Now I'm seeing a property here that the honey, we're, we're doing fine on the time, but the honey takes longer to freeze than sugar. 
So we'll be able to calculate that in and tell people. Uh, and you asked, your original question was, well, if the first batch takes, I say, eight minutes, because I pull stiffer, uh, will the second batch be five? No. The second batch will be maybe seven and a half. If I make 20 batches of vanilla, one right after the other, the second batch, the tenth batch, the fourteenth batch will all be seven and a half minutes. If I rinse out the machine or go to another flavor, boom, I'm back up to approximately eight minutes. Every flavor is different. I don't know any, and because baking and, and ice cream are the same thing. I don't know any baker who just relies on electronics and walks away. I mean, that's fool stuff. I mean, that's, that's for people who don't know what they're doing, but it sure looks good. And it looks like real fun that the machine's going to do all the thinking for me. Okay, I, yes, sir. So what if you want to make mass quantity of it? So basically, what you're saying is just for individuals. What's mass quantity? What I can find, like if you wholesale it or something. Like, say, if you want to wholesale your world, right? right. Like, what would you suggest that you do? Because basically what you're saying is you have a store and you want the best water ice, but that's kind of, you know, hard to do to make a lot to be that precise. Well, you buy a bigger the, machine. The machine, he's got a 40. The largest machine in the world is our 11 gallon machine. 11 gallons. That's 44 quarts. That's, that's four tops. But you can run one. these machines, any of them, 24 7. I know, but think about it. You want it 24 7, you don't want to really take the time every batch. You can still become a person who's tired. They're getting paid for it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, you hire them to work from midnight to 7 a.m., they're getting paid for it. Tastes pretty uh, good. Much different than regular lemon ice. Does it? Much different. Yeah, I guess it this does. This is gourmet. Huh? This is gourmet. Okay. <laughs> That's holding. Any other questions right now? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> Jeff, what are you going to be making first today? I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Here's a question right here. Steve, do you still have the 11 gallon in stock? I'm sorry? Do you have the 11 gallon machine in stock? Uh, today we do, yes. You have your checkbook with you? Okay, then he's got one. No, we do have one. They put it on my desk last night. <laughs> Hello, Darren. Get that one ready. We've got a live one here. Hey, Mike, lock the door. He's got money. <laughs> No, we do have one. When we take a tour, we'll go see it. Um, we're not custom, or, I mean, we are custom building machines. We build it to the location, but we're not sitting around waiting. We're always above full capacity. So people put in an order and it's about uh, four weeks to get a machine because there's that many orders ahead of you. But in your case... In your case, we have a 44 in stock. <laughs> it's sitting by the loading box. <laughs> And we won't even <laughs> charge you extra. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. Uh, I want one of these. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Why didn't we think of that a hundred years ago? What's that? This. This machine. Oh, the little thing. Yeah. You know what Jeff's talking about? Um, these are both brand new machines, just finished yesterday, and they said, don't you dare scratch them. Uh, oh, I've got an idea for you. We're going to make $200. Um, so they come in and they take the top lid and they flip it over and put it on top of the machine with a couple of pads. <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, you're giving me a headache. Everybody's going to look at this tray and say, it's a new innovation, Emory Thompson. And then I thought, I wait a minute, <laughs> we can sell this to all the old timers, everybody who's already got a machine because your, your, your stuff isn't falling off. You got this nice tray. I said, we can do it, make a gold mine. It's so, perfect. Here's the other thing. You've always been running uh, a 12 quart. And you, 24. Tw well, no, here you've been running a 12. Oh, right. And you begged me for a 24. And, and the answer was no, 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 no. And then I thought of something last night. I thought, I, I'm still going to let this machine go right away. But we will build, uh, we'll take a machine every time we have a show coming. 
we'll take a brand new machine and bring it in here. And then since it's run by Jeff and Steve for $200, we'll autograph them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll go over real big. I sold one once autograph. I didn't charge for it, but we took a big old magic, mar uh, magic marker and, and uh, put best wishes to Harry's Ice Cream Parlor on the side of the machine, and then I signed it. Getting there. Yeah. So the, we're finding out, this is the first time we've run this, the honey takes longer to freeze. Not over the top, so what are you looking at to let you know that it's done? How do we know if it's done? When it's done, peak. What? It's peak. Peak. When, when you let some out and it makes a peak and doesn't do that, done. Okay. Hello. And that's, that's very subjective. You know, Jimmy will, t will make it different than Claude, his father, will. It's, that's why as soon as you have an employee making your product, for whatever reason, the recipe's there, and it's going to be different. No matter what you do, it's going to be different. He'll be there alone, and he'll say, well, it looks ready to me. Doesn't look ready to me. Or he'll taste it and say, damn, did I put enough sugar in? I think I ought to add a little more sugar. It's always going to be different. As soon as you relinquish control to an employee, your product will change. It may not change for the worse, it may not be catastrophic, but it's going to be different. Now, it's funny you say that because people call up and they say, I've been running my Emory Thompson for 17 years and all of a sudden now I'm having this trouble, this trouble, this trouble. And I figured it out and I said, so, you've gotten lazy and you're not making your ice cream anymore. Well, I've got so many other things to do. And you hired a 17-year-old uh, to make your ice cream. Yeah, but he's very good. Yeah. He said, no, he's not very, very good. He's making a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And it wasn't the machine, it was the operator. You know what, I just tasted that, and I don't like honey. Really? I don't put honey in anything, but I guess if you like honey, it's gonna be great. We, we make several ice creams with honey. Okay, but it's good, and it's almost ready. It's gourmet. It's gourmet. Gourmet okay. lemon ices. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gourmet lemon ices. Are you air cooled? This machine is air cooled. This is the water countertops cooled. are all air cooled. The, the bigger ones can be air or water, depending on what you buy. What you suggest? I suggest water cooled because if I had a machine this big and air cooled, and I was running it, this room's at 72 degrees, 74 degrees. It would go up to 84 degrees in one hour. And uh, water is expensive, uh, but it goes up pennies a year. If you look at last year's water bill to this year's, it didn't go up very much in price. But your electric bill for air conditioning, every time there's a disturbance in the Mideast, there goes your electric bill. Whether it affects the United States or not, they just raise the world price. I think we're ready. What do you think? I'll let you know in about a minute what I think. All right. <laughs> Because we have to yes. serve it now. Steve, would it be feasible if you designed it where you had like a, an output on the back of air cold ones, um, where where like you know you have a dryer hookup where it takes the hot air out, it's outside? It's significant. Unless you're working in a closet, I know Steve disagrees with me, but it doesn't change your air conditioning bill. It's it's insignificant. It's okay. it's just a. No, I know. I did when I had the six quart. Yeah, but the six quart is insignificant. But that thing. Oh is, no, you shouldn't have is, no. This is a no. six and a quarter horsepower. Total Water running. cooled is just much more. This efficient. is four times as big. Right. Ready? Yes. All right. Refrigeration's off. We're gonna open the gate. Watch this. This is the other thing on those Italian ice machines. They take or the Capuchani's. They take a scoop and put it in. Take a scoop and put it in. You're there all day. Watch this. I need a. Beautiful thing. Get the other one behind you. Yeah. There. Right, I'm going for a small one. So we will see what it tastes like. Anybody want to try it? Yes. No? Yes. Well, come on up. All right, come on up and try it. Yeah. 
What? 21. Yeah, it took a long. Honey's a long time. Thank you. Bob. Hey, Alfie. Hey, Alfie. Oh, you made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you pick them up? Yeah. Good. I'm sorry. Do you have I was afraid. Later, like ice cream. I bring it out. And I said, and I told her, I told Chrissy, I said, when they want to ride back, that doesn't mean to Naples. <laughs> Hey, welcome. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Did that answer your question? Okay. Well, I told her I got. Thank you, sir. Sure. Where are you from, Michael? Texas. What part? Uh, South Central. A little town called York. Oh, not far from Houston? Two hours from Houston, yes, sir. Boy, Houston tomorrow night, huh? Oh, oh, it was great. Nice ball, yes, sir. Yeah. Almost went to the game last night. It's like, no, I'll oh, wait. Well, I hope you can wait. <laughs> you want some for Mike? Yes. Oh. Spoon? Can I have two of them for the eleven quart? Sure. I like your cons. Nice cons. How'd you train her that good? Hey, move your sweater. What's your name? Kim? Kim. Take a spoon, Kim. Faith. Is this hope? No, he's two and we don't sing. And you don't what? Tim and Faith, you know, the singers, country singers. I don't know anything about that. He's not a country music fan. No. I, I know that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, this is basically two things honey and lemon. That's it. Honey and lemon. How is it? It's different. It's different. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to sell it at Dodger Stadium. Take it away. I'm the sugar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Play time's over. So, no, so, okay, guys. Because I was talking about the guy who's from Naples. Yes. Can your recipes be adjusted to make them sugar free? Ooh, give that to me. <laughs> I, I need to have that. I have, a, I have a great discussion. Can I that. answer first and then you can take over? <laughs> that be my guess. Because yours is going to be the same as mine. Okay, there's two things working here like this sugar free dessert. Sugar free dessert doesn't exist in my world. <laughs> Now Steve can take over. Okay, uh, <laughs> starting off on Jeff's theme, how many of you go into a pastry shop? You're, you're on a diet, you're on the paleo diet, you're on the grapefruit diet, you're on the Hollywood diet, whatever the diet's on, the diet du jour. And do you go into a pastry shop and say, I would like a really bland muffin uh, with almost no taste, no sugar, and using a, a chemical called multidextrin, which is a natural uh, modified food starch, which will give you diarrhea. Uh, do you say that to a bakery? No, you avoid the bakery. But then, the day you skip your diet, I gotta have that donut, I gotta have that crawler. Uh, you go to the bakery, and you don't go to the supermarket and buy uh, donuts, you go to a donut shop. Um, uh, you go to a Jupiter Donut Shop and you buy a really great donut to, because you're breaking your diet. But then they turn around and they say to us in the ice cream industry, oh, we want something that tastes really awful, uh, that's really bland and uh, doesn't have uh, uh, any uh, sugar in it. Okay, well, we call that Halo, uh, which is just an absolutely horrible ice cream. 
uh, they sell it because they convince women, oh, you can eat the whole pint. You can be really gluttonous and eat the whole pint and only have 100 calories. Well, it's 100 pints of eating awful stuff. What we say is we're making the world's best frozen desserts, and so when you break your diet, make sure you come to us. <laughs> don't, go to, don't go to the public supermarket to, to, to pick up ice cream. It's all made on my machines anyway. Briars, Hershey's, Publix, uh, they all do. They, we started them, now they test on the CB350. Uh, but they're making mass consumption. We're making absolute incredible quality, the one that makes lines. So, uh, the other problem, though, is this multidextrin. A lady the other day, I was going to say about paleo, a lady, uh, a person sent me in a recipe, uh, a liquid, flew it in here for paleo ice cream. And I ran it. And it was pretty tasty. And if it had good flavoring, it would have been terrific. The only thing is, and I hate to be graphic, is that was four days ago, and I'm still suffering from Montezuma's revenge. Because I don't know what was, I can, I can speculate that there's monk fruit in it. Uh, or there's some other natural ingredients, but this stuff just wrecks your stomach. And you're not going to get people to come back if they can target it down to, uh, oh, I feel bad because of that that I bought. Uh, well, I'm never going back there again. We're in, a, we're in a, uh, a luxury industry of providing you the greatest frozen desserts you've ever had. And, and you've got to stick to that. And you just have to say, I know you want something dietetic, but we don't make it because it can't be made right. And when you do break your diet, make sure you come see me. I'll make sure you get the best thing in the world. And I don't know if that's the right answer or not. It's very it's similar to my, my wife is on uh, the keto diet. And what I found that she's doing is she's making keto pancakes, <laughs> keto chocolate pudding. She's, she's trying to assimilate diet food with treat food. And to me, that defeats the whole purpose of a diet because it's not working here. Because the day you stop eating it, you're going back to pancakes and bread and chocolate and all that. So it, I'll never have sugar-free in my store or lactose-free um, or, or any, what else free? Um, Flavor-free. Free. Uh, <laughs> Flavor I won't free. have it because this is ice cream. It's been around for 2,000 years, and it's a treat. So when you want a treat, come to my store. 200 people a night want a treat. They come to my store, and they eat full fat. Well, it's not really full fat, is it? I use 10%. No, it's only 10%. It's federal minimum. Right. I use 10% butterfat ice cream, whereas haagen is 16%. And think of it this way, the difference is if you drink a glass of skim milk, you're going to die. It's awful. But yet if you add just 2% butterfat to that, you've got 2% milk, which is drinkable. If you add 2 more percent, you have whole milk, which is certainly drinkable. But that's, that's a horse of a different color. And Jeff has a wonderful line that he uses in these programs. He says that everybody in the world either wants ice cream or eats ice cream. There's no in-between. I've never met anybody who didn't eat ice cream or, if because of dietary restrictions, wished that they could. So you're really going into a fantastic business. I mean, hey, you watch on Shark Tank all the time, and people make the mistake. They say, well, with our brand-new uh, design rubber band, we're tapping into an, uh, a market of 83 million right, people. Right. And you go... Yeah, but that's if 80, 83 million people really want your product. Our market is 7 billion people. And they all want frozen desserts. Every single person on this planet, whether they're six weeks old, you, you take a baby six weeks old, put ice cream on a spoon, the eyes light up and they grab for more. Same thing with a 100-year-old guy. Give him ice cream, eyes light up and he grabs for more. Yes, sir. Do you have um, any different types of dough or attachment? to feel quartz or paints. Steve? I'll take that one too. Um, Capuchani years ago came out with a $3,200 optional door that will fill pints. And they got sued for them. And they had to buy them all back. For some reason, last month, somebody brought it back out again. And the same thing's going to happen. And I came up with a little story with a picture which kind of went wild on the internet. Uh, I called it the tater tot theorem. And basically what it is, is we just made a batch 
of product. Let's say it was salted caramel ice cream. Well, if I'm here and I take out uh, one portion, and it's, it's all finished. I've got, uh, well, in here, six quarts, six liters. I take out one portion of salted caramel, and I put it up here. And I take out another portion, and I put it up here. And I take out another portion and put it up here. It's just like you have rows and rows of tater tots that you put into your oven. And it says bake for 24 minutes and then take them out. And what do you do? You take the whole tray out. What if you took them out like the Capigiani door and you took out one tater tot and another tater tot? Now the ones that are left in there are starting to get a little uh, more brown. And you take out another one and another one. Now they're starting to burn. And you keep taking out another one and another one. And the next thing you know, the fire department's taking them out for you because your oven's on fire. It continues to cook even with the refrigeration off so your pints and quarts are not even. A batch freezer, the term itself, and this is, it comes from this, this is what my grandfather was using 115 years ago, that's a batch freezer. You make a batch of ice cream and then take it all out at once. Not designed to do pints because your pints will all be different. And McDonald's may not be a great hamburger, but I think we'll all agree that whether you're in Moscow or Indonesia or San Diego or Manhattan, that Big Mac is the same Big Mac no matter where you go. And they have consistency. If I only go up, my wife and I only go up to Cape Cod every two years to Four Seas ice cream, best mint chip on earth, no, except for yours. Um, I remember what it tasted like. And so when I go up there, that mint chip better taste just the way I remember it two years ago. It can't be inconsistent, or you run into what Swenson's ran into when they went from West Coast to East Coast. What do you, what do you mean by inconsistent? By the, time your the first, your, by the time your first and last pint or quart is out, it's not going to be the same. The texture is different, and the that's weight why, is different. That's why I will have a blast freezer next to my machine. No, well, the think, texture about, is think about this. I, I, there's one point that's not being made. You're beating cream in a bowl. Okay? You so mean by the time everything is extracted? Much more air. Yeah, but at this point, your freezer, your freezer stops and it's just extracting without creating It's beating. Cold. It's beating. It's beating and the, bill and the cylinder is still cold. The, the cylinder was super cold. Just because you turn off the refrigeration, it doesn't feed anymore. But if you just let this machine sit idle, it'll keep ice cream at ice cream temperature for about two hours. It's very cold. But as the machine goes, which you need to extract more air. When I'm having uh, people over at my house and I make ice cream for the, I, we said this in class, the first bucket that comes out is the one I'm taking <laughs> because the other ones have more air content in it. But you know, your containers, your white container over there, your tub is what, two and a half gallons? Yeah. So five gallons? equals 20 quarts. It's quite fast to fill 20 quarts. No, it isn't. It is not. You try it sometime. 20 quarts is a lot of ice cream, and, and if you're hiring help, they're not working as fast as you. They're not going bing, bing, bing. You want to see that? There's a video of um, an ice cream out of Cleveland where this man has the record for filling pints. Uh, but they're taking it like I did. They're taking, uh, you're hiring people. They're taking one, and they're putting it up there and then they're taking another one. You have so much inconsistency. What the solution you... is either you, what I do is I take the tubs, put it in the freezer, and continue making ice cream. Now it firms up even more. I can come back 40 minutes later and hand fill my pints, and I do that until it becomes labor expensive, and then I buy a Sawville automation, semi-automated pint what filler. Would, what would you, you pour say? It in and just push a foot pedal. What would you say <clears throat> is the maximum wholesale operation you can have with these? Uh, 250,000 gallons a year. <clears throat> Which equates to how many in a day, like, you know, for argument's sake? Oh, I don't know. You can run a 24-hour day. I, I couldn't give you a number. Well, because his point is valid. If you want to wholesale uh, from yeah. your machine, the, it's possible on a small scale. They're always going to, no matter how long you take, it's going to be increasing. It, you can get a Sawville filler for seven thousand dollars, and it solves all your problems. But I mean, if you buy the whoops, if you buy the Capigiani door, you'll be suing them because everybody else did. It doesn't work. It flies in the face of physics. 
Uh, if you leave a product in and you're still whipping it, even if you're standing here while we're talking and you're moving a whisk through cream, you're adding air, no matter what you say. I gotta let you get ahead. What? You're gonna make something. Whenever you're done? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Do I have that in writing? You, you have it in stone. The bladders, we always use the bladder. We're making ice cream now. And uh, we're making, who said yay? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> nothing like ice cream. Uh, and as you know, and you're tired of hearing, I wrote a book of the original recipes that started our store off. Uh, I have six with me if anybody wants one. But anyway... The recipe for this, what we're making, is in here. Uh, I spoke to Steve a couple of days ago, and uh, I said, well, how about if I make blah, blah, and blah? He said, well, you know, it's getting to be Halloween, so why not make some scary flavors uh, or whatever? So I looked up in my book, and of course, we still sell it. It's still in my store today, 10 years later, Frankenstein. It was called that then, it's called that now. Uh, the difference is, years ago, they didn't have chocolate ice cream mix. This is chocolate ice cream mix. It's 10% chocolate, 10% butterfat chocolate. Uh, most of the time, it's no good. But I use a dairy that produces very good chocolate mix. So the original recipe calls for white mix, which they mistakenly say is vanilla mix, but it's white mix, 10% white, and I would add four pounds of Giardelli chocolate powder, and it would come to be chocolate. Uh, so that's what's in the book, but now that we have this, we're gonna use this. This is a 24 quart machine Brand new, because he's always got me working on a 12-quart, so we would have to divide this in half. But now that it's 24-quart, these are two and a half gallons. These are 10 quarts, these bladders. That's pretty universal, whether you're in Canada or, uh, in the, or anywhere that you get bladders. They come two bladders to a box, a case, they call it, two bladders. So you're getting five gallons per box. Uh, and the price is pretty much the same everywhere. It var I found it varies $5, so it's no big deal. So the recipe today, we're going to start with 10 quarts of, the, of this in the machine, all right? Don't ask me a question for the next 30 seconds, because we'll be cleaning up. Uh, I just asked you not to do that. Go ahead, before I open it. What's that model number for that machine, the one that you're getting ready to use? I don't know. It's not a C I know that one's a CB 350. That's a 24. <laughs> this is an NW 24 IOC 1. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yoda. Thank you. Now, what's the population of Rhode Island in September? 6,800. <laughs> we have our own Siri here. All right, so as we know how to handle this, right, you lift it up, choke the neck, take the top off, and what do we do now? We grip it. We don't lay it in our hands. We actually grip it so that we have control. And then what we're going to do is pour it in here. Boom. Most of it goes in there. It's funny, at the store, I never drop a drip. Drip a drop. How many drips in a drop, Yoda? No idea. <laughs> Boy, this is great. Imagine taking a, a final exam in this room. Tell me what this is. All right. Uh, what I've got here is a tray of fresh homemade brownies with fudge on top. And this is uh, Hershey's syrup. And these are Hershey's mini chips. So that's what we'll do. We're going to do so a little different this time. But what we'll start with is adding the chips. We'll start the machine on. Thank you. 
We'll put in the chips. That's another good thing. Big wide neck there. You throw anything in there. And then we'll put the brownies in. Never mind, I'll get it. <laughs> now, with any other machine, you have to add this all at the end because the opening is just a little slit. And it says in the instruction book, they'll void your warranty if you put anything into the machine. But if you want to get a great flavor uh, for every particle of dairy and a particle of flavor next to it, it goes in the machine. So that gives me what I call my fruit flavor. I blindfold it, I taste it, yep, that's, that's the ice cream. But we also eat with our eyes. So I usually take the second half of the ingredients. If I'm doing strawberries, one quart into the machine, the second quart I keep in advance. Every particle of dairy has a particle of strawberry next to it. And then as it's coming out, I'll shake in, I open up the gate partway, slow it down a little bit, and I shake in my strawberries. So now I've got fruit flavor and fruit identity. And that makes just an incredible ice cream. That's the way haagen and Ben and & Jerry began. And then they got up to the 250,000 mark and they went over to what's called a continuous freezer, which is a million dollar long narrow tube uh, that makes a thousand gallons plus an hour. So there is a difference between homemade ice cream and commercial ice cream. And it's, it's basically all in the application of the flavor. We should add a little vanilla. Sure, it's mine. So, right. <laughs> Oh, like you paid for it. So we'll add, uh, I usually, my uh, ratio is one ounce per quart. So we have 10 quarts in there, so quick, how many ounces? Okay, good You're man. killing me. That's 10 ounces? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, a friend of mine just estimated that in my store, which is only open four hours a night, six nights a week, I have made 58,000 gallons of ice cream. So that's 10 ounces. <clears throat> now sometimes I throw this in now, but for everybody here, because you're special, we'll squirt it in as it's coming out, give it a little look to it, okay? Is this on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll turn it on. You want me to hold up a sign that says applause? <laughs> or are you sleeping? Uh, oh, that's a good idea. I can use this to give Mike, he's having a party tonight. I can use these to give him some ice cream. Okay. All right, so that's... Uh, one, two, three. We should get five out of this. One, two, three, four, okay. five, six. All right, any questions about Frankenstein? Yes, sir. What? No, we're making uh, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and then vampire milkshakes. <laughs> huh? Huh? Vampire and I'm making uh, I'm making pumpkin pies, um, and what was my other one? Oh, the banana banana, banana sorbet. Yes. Uh, what's the shelf life of uh, this ice cream that we're making today? When you say shelf life, do you mean in a deep freeze, in the freezer, on the counter, in your stomach? What do you mean? Uh, in a deep freeze. In a deep freeze, uh, six months, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it gets rock hard. And then how about selling? I mean, what do you suggest by the time? What's the, the longest you should really keep ice cream? In, in, I make in, ice cream three days a week. I know you do, and then you go over. But let's just say, worst case scenario, you're starting a store, it's not that busy. When should you throw it away or get rid of it or give it to your friends and make new stuff? Oh, so you, keep it. you know what I'm saying. I, give it to your friends. Give it to my friend. Yes. And, and get a new batch in there so that you've no, got a good product no. going on. That's that's not that's not happening. 
The happen. ice cream will last till it's gone. Okay, okay. Most people used to figure at Baskin Robbins the calculation was 10 days. But times have changed. They were 32, 33 flavors. Uh, we've now cut that down to about 15 flavors. It was too much choice, too much overlap, and it slowed the line down. By having a limited number of flavors and bringing in a special of the week, uh, everything sells. Uh, but if you if you had to have a general rule in the dipping cabinet, 10 days; in the tempering cabinet, uh, 30 days; and in the hardening cabinet, uh, six months. Okay. But again, if it's not moving, it's a wrong flavor. I make a coffee banana ice cream. If it wasn't for me, it would sit here for <laughs> two and a half years because everybody thinks it's a horrible flavor. The bananas are fighting with the coffee for world dominance. I love it, and that's why I make it, because I know that when it's in that freezer, it's all mine. Anytime I want to bring home some coffee banana, it's there waiting for me. But that's not the way to run a business. Uh, you have to be attuned to what your customers are saying, and even if they don't say anything, the fact that it doesn't rotate out is you think it's a great flavor. They think it's terrible. And you got to go by their opinion because we're in here to make money. We have a, uh, I run a two-day class, and the night of, after the first day, I tell everybody, go home, think of an ice cream. And if it's good, we'll make it tomorrow. So this past class, we had no, 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 yes. <laughs> because a lot of people, uh, bacon ice cream, and what's the floral one? Beer. Lavender ice cream, and rose hips, and chai tea. I know that ain't going to fly in my store. Uh, it's, just, it's just not going to work. But somebody suggested a flavor that did work. We made it, right? Yes, we made it, and it was really good. And it was uh, peanut butter Nutella. Whoa. So we, we, we checked out how to make it, and we decided on 40 ounces of peanut butter and 100 ounces of Nutella with the mix. And that's it, and it was pretty damn good. And we have it now. Tonight we'll be selling it in the store. And it's called Zack Attack, because the guy who did it was Zack. <laughs> so you get some flavors from the class. Yeah. It's very good. I made a good one last year. We called it NYPD. Uh, Paula's father was a New York City police officer. So what are cops known for? Donuts. Donuts and coffee. <laughs> so I made donuts and coffee ice cream. And I told people, I said, here's the formula. You know, if you're in Los Angeles, call it LAPD. If you're in uh, Palm Beach, call it PBIPD. You know, you take the name, but the, it always gets a laugh, and it's a great flavor. So you, Jeff taught me this. I used to buy everything in, uh, I don't even want to show them, uh, big cans like this. Uh, it's called a number 10 tin. And, it, and up until 10 years ago, when I started working with Jeff, my idea of strawberry ice cream was to open up a number 10 tin, which was the crummiest, lowest grade strawberries you could possibly buy in that they glop. couldn't sell anywhere else. And they threw it in with red dye 40 and corn syrup. And we would ladle that out and put it in the machine and call that strawberry ice cream. And then a funny thing happened. 85 million millennials came along and they said, ah, we're not going for this. My daughter, my five-year-old here, is not having red dye 40. And, and, and these corn strawberries, syrup. And then the corn syrup. And these strawberries taste awful. And we found out that we could raise the price of ice cream sufficiently to where we could use all fresh ingredients. When I make ice cream, Jeff goes walking, you know, he looks like some crazy. He's walking up and down the aisles, mumbling to himself at Publix, coming wow, up with new sorry. ideas. That's how he came up with his key lime pie uh, ice cream. And uh, I do the same thing now. I go to the supermarket and I see, okay, what's in season? And that's what I'll turn into an ice cream or a sorbet. And, and it's just great fun. Uh, but our, the quality of ice cream's gone way up. And pint sales, Haagen-Dazs is $5.13 at Publix. My customers are getting seven, eight, nine dollars. Uh, and I always tell people, I, I, I teach at Penn State, and I asked the head of Penn State uh, Dairy School, I said, why do my two customers, haagen and Ben and Jerry, why are they only selling pints? He said, because you'll buy one pint at seven dollars, but you won't buy a quart uh, uh, or a half, half gallon, gallon, half for, gallon 25, for 28 dollars. Yeah. You won't do it. It's too much money. 
So we sell in pints. And, and now, do you notice haagen has the little ones? Yes. They sell the, the half heard, pints. We've been talking about half pints for six months now. Uh, because uh, you've got a store, let, let's say you're Starbucks, and a lot of people go out at lunchtime and they buy uh, a coffee to take back to their desk. They're not gone very long. Well, what if they sold uh, half pints of ice cream? If you buy a pint and bring it back to your desk, you look gluttonous. I don't care how skinny you are. They go, oh, look at him. He's eating a whole pint of ice cream. But a half pint looks smaller, and we could sell it for two half pints would equal more than the cost of the pint. And you're going home, and you're going to pick up, I'm going to pick up uh, some mint chip for myself, and I better not show up at home if I don't bring Paula some coconut. Uh, because, you know, so you buy two. You can't just say, hey, I bought this for myself. You bring home two pints, you spend $14. It's, it's pure profit. And, and the other part of this that I have done with stores is if you go into Culver's, uh, who we put into business years ago, you will see uh, that uh, they have a visual display, a small cabinet filled with pints, frozen down very cold. And you go in, you grab a couple of pints, and you take them over the counter, you pay for them, and you leave. So I said, let's do a version of that. So mine's based on Florida. It's, it's 100 degrees out. My golden retriever's in the back seat. I leave the engine on and running because I know I'm going to walk into the store. I'm only going to be there 45 seconds. There is this takeout vertical counter filled with pints. And, there's no, and, and here's a cash register, and there's nobody there. I grab my two pints. I put them on the cash register. The server's over here. And she says, he says to the line who's getting whatever, uh, excuse me one second, I'll be right back. Comes over here, does it like Starbucks. You want a receipt? No. You want a bag? No. Slip your card in. Slip your card in. I grab my two pints. 45 seconds later, I'm back in my car driving home, and I've got dessert for Paula and me. And I didn't care what the price was. It was that I could get in and out quickly. I didn't have to go into the supermarket here and wait online to pick up two pints, which aren't very cold, and take them home. I'm grabbing them super cold, and, uh, and I'll temper them up in my own freezer. It's, it's just a huge win-win, and the millennials are driving that too. Pints have become like craft beer. Uh, beer used to be uh, a drink, a beverage. You had a beer. Not anymore. Now, you instead of a $6.50 six-pack of Bud Light, you buy an $18 six-pack of Wicked Mountain Blue Lagoon locally sourced beer. It's a reward for a good week. Hey, I was a good person. I got a trophy reward, and here it is, my six-pack, and, and I get a beer. And there are, yeah, there are 74. Five million baby boomers, there's 82 million millennials. And the millennials are going to be around a hell of a lot longer than us baby boomers. Uh, so they're your How market. How much time have I got? Yes. Oh, you got forever. You know, what's the, only the good die young? Yes. Culver's is uh, a very successful operation. And I understand the sizzle is that you can watch the clusters, the frozen clusters come out of the machine so it looks fresh and everything's great. If it's frozen, can you freeze custard and gelato? Does it freeze as well as ice cream? Yes, they do. In fact, I was the first one to do it. The Italians came over here and they said, well, you have to make your ice cream fresh every day. Well, that's nice, except in Italy, uh, you, you, I'm walking through Florence, it's 9.30 in the morning, and I walk in and I get a tiramisu, or I want a tiramisu. I'm sorry, we ran out. Uh, and I shrug my shoulders, eh, so what? Because there's another gelateria a block and a half away. I'll get my tiramisu there. There's no brand loyalty. So they're making small batches until they run out. Here in the United States, you can't run out of a flavor. If you advertise mint chip, you better darn well have mint chip. So the gelato people, when it first hit these shores in San Francisco, were making uh, tiramisu, and it didn't all sell because we don't eat as much gelato, and they had to throw it out. Imagine if I'm building a lot of machines, more than anybody. What if I bought a sheet of stainless steel a day, or a truckload of stainless steel a day, and at the end of the day, I didn't use it all? Do I throw it away? No, I have an inventory. Americans are based on inventory. So we can take any product, flash freeze it, and keep it uh, just fine. And that's what we do. The Italians, it's their modus operandi, and it works fine for them. 
Hardening cabinet, flash freezer, blast freezer, they're all the same thing. Or you can use a chest freezer when you're just starting out. It's all based on volume. Uh, if, if you were going to start a moving company, you might start with a, a, a Ford Conaline van. But eventually you're going to get up to tractor trailers. Steve. What happened? It got, got quiet. You Is it still it. running? I didn't touch it. Okay, you you did. No, you froze no, it up. Really? You touched it. You touched it. How many fab gallon fills do you need? You can do two tubs every eight minutes, so give it time to load and unload. That's about 30 gallons an hour, uh, times as many hours as you want to work. It will go on forever. You'll be exhausted. But here's a way to double your production, and I, I think people should do this. There's, there's three groups of people who, in my experience, especially because of my wife, who are always looking for a second job. Uh, policemen and firemen are always have second jobs. Up in New York, uh, it's gardening and landscaping. In Florida here, it seems to be fencing. Every policeman or fireman has a second job doing fencing. Um, and I include the military who have just rolled out of the military. Highly qualified, well trained. These are three groups of people who look at a job, not like my guys back up in New York, like, oh, we got to go work at Emory Thompson for eight hours today, what a drag. You hire someone of that caliber to come in at 11 o'clock tonight, and they look at it as it's a mission. My mission tonight is to make 70 gallons of ice cream for the owner. And he hands me my file card, the file card, which I'm not worried about him stealing the recipes uh, as the owner because I got them off of Steve's website and then just tweaked them myself. Uh, you hand that to him and say, hey, I'm going to bed. And you go home and let them make ice cream. Who better to lock up your building than a policeman or a fireman or a military? Give them the key. Let them lock it up. You come in, and it's all done. And I didn't make up this idea. Uh, um, hungry Harry, not Hungry Harry. Uh, Harry Coley is a custard uh, business in um, uh, Texas, Dallas, Texas. And his son loved baseball. And work was interfering with him watching baseball. So his father said, fine, you come in at 11 o'clock and work till 6 a.m. making ice cream. Well, he trusted his son to uh, keep the business open. So unfortunately, instead of buying a second machine from me, just find a qualified person. When I was young and stupid, I used to say, <laughs> and raising children, I used to say, oh, let's hire mothers. Uh, because they're not doing anything, that would get me killed today. <laughs> um, uh, and, and they had from 9 in the morning when they dropped off the kids till 3 in the afternoon, and they're going to be great. They can come in and make ice cream. They can work in the store. Well, I forgot one little thing I learned real fast. Kids get sick. <laughs> they get the flu. They get, they get everything that exists, and then they give it to the parents. So it, it wasn't a viable workforce. Uh, your old containers don't... Fit, fit the new ones? Yeah. That's okay. There you go. No, that, these are your old ones here, I think. Okay. And are we going to try this? Oh, you want to try this? Yeah. Yeah, well, come on out. <laughs> okay, ready to roll. Are you listening in? Huh? How do you know to come in? Okay. I'm going to go get some markers. All right. Is that going to be enough to feed everyone? I don't know. I got a little more over here. We'll see. I think this is extraordinary. Thank you. I know Mike, right? Mike? Well, sure. And Paula. I always do. And Olga and Christy and I Crystal. This is Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Ooh. Does anybody want to take a break or should we keep going? We'll keep going. What are you listening to him for? One of us got so, one of us got so busy talking his head off that we uh, burned up some time. <laughs> and I don't think it was Jeff. Mm -hmm. No, the one is the one he's using for twenty-four. Thank you. So if anyone out there is interested in this fantastic new tray to put on your machine, uh, we can adapt it to machines built from 1959 uh, through today. And just call uh, our parts department, Crystal and Christy, and they'll help you out. No, we leave it so that you can take what? it off and uh, no, wash it. Yet, you know. Oh, it's, it's uh, the heaviest gears that we use on the machines. 
Oh, sorry. Okay. Only a little. We Oh, good. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. I think we're going Okay, I'll take it all. Okay, Claude, Claude. Steve, Steve, Steve. I had, had a Boston hat on. <laughs> okay. Oh, Pretty I guess good. I'm that. How is it? Can I get one sip? No, it's not a B, is it? It's that awful Detroit. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Try some. Okay. It did look like a boss. I gotta get new glasses. <laughs> I'm not here. Oh, my phone. Oh, that's good. <laughs> we have to leave my freezer. Oh, what's today? Wednesday? Yes. Oh, oh boy. An appointment. No, I got to order my bladders. I oh. forgot. What time is it? It's 10.30. That's who that was. Oh, you want to go do that? Uh, well, you're on, right? Yeah, well, let I'm me just going to finish this out. Okay, let me see what I'm making. Well, I think I'll make the banana. Well, I was going to make the banana Italian ice. Okay. I got into a discussion with um, another ice cream store, um, Gary's Ice Cream in Chelmsford. Who's? Gary's Ice Cream in Chelmsford, Mass. And I thought I was just, you know, going through one of my, you know, you're the smartest person on earth phases. And so I was telling him that I go to the, uh, uh, the green grocer at the supermarket and I see these bananas in this condition and I know that these are at their sweetest point for making a product. These are absolutely fantastic uh, because once they start getting brown like that, the sugar contents are going through the roof. They're going to be perfect Christy. for ice cream. And so I, being the smartest person on earth, go up to the green grocer and say, you know what? You got all these brown bananas here and they're not good marketing. I'll take them off your hands for half price. And that was, I mean, I'm smart. That was a great deal. Gary hears that and he says, you are really a rookie. He said, I go to the green grocer and I see those brown bananas and I say to the green grocer, you're going to have to throw those out. You can't sell them to anyone. And you're going to put them in the dumpster and you're going to pay to get that dumpster taken away and that's going to be a lot of money. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them off your hands and I'm not even going to charge you for them. <laughs> and I go, oh, you are too good. But we are, the point is, we are looking for, uh, these have been sitting in a brown paper bag for days, and that's what we want, is um, these to be really, really ripe. And we got really, really ripe bananas. And let me start by washing my hands again. So I'll be right with you. Uh, chocolate ice cream okay? Great, man. Good. Yeah. Don't have it after 6 o'clock. You'll be up all night. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I, I mean, it's the chocolate ice cream or, or any flavor that you're adding chocolate chips to, do you find that the, the semi-sweet sell better than the milk chocolate chips? Or? I use all three. I use semi-sweet, milk chocolate, and white chocolate. The next one, we're going to use white chocolate. Depend, you know, that's the art. That's the art. And you can also use, instead of chocolate chips, you can use chocolate chunks. You can buy Barry Calibo chocolate wafers. Uh, it's, all, it's all up to you. It's your store. You're the king. If you've seen a difference in, in rather, so, customers appreciate a darker chocolate or a lighter chocolate. Customers? Who thinks about them? Your wallet. No, my wallet does just fine. I'm the king of the castle. Uh, I think as long as you use high quality chocolate, you're okay. Uh, I've settled in the middle on Hershey's chocolate. Uh, to me, it's good quality. It's all chocolate. 
Uh, and it's better than Walmart. I shouldn't say that, should I? No. Yoda, can you cut that out? I'll make a note. Thank you. Uh, it's just like anything else. I, I always profess you can make your ice cream with M&Ms or you can buy M&Ms. M&Ms is like six blocks from our stores. So. Okay. But my point is, we did costs yesterday. We did costs to the penny on batches of ice cream because they wanted to know how much money they're going to make in this business and how much money they're making when the customer eats a $5 ice cream. And we went down to the penny on it. And the difference between using the highest quality ingredients that you can buy, no matter what they are. I use Giardelli chocolate powder in my machine. That's very expensive, it's $120 for a box. But the, the, the finished product translates to pennies. It's pennies. And there's so much profit, we're working on, uh, it's hard to believe, 65% profit in this business. Nothing else is like that in the world. 65% profit. Right? We figured it out. Crazy. On the product. <clears throat> On the product. Right. 65%. What, our no. triple net was bad? No, yeah, no, no right. it's not. I'm just the saying. Triple the triple net was outstanding. Yeah. Triple net is the rent, the employees, the insurance, all that stuff. And we're still making a boatload. That's retail, right? Retail. Yeah. yeah. Retail. Retail, <laughs> the backbone of the country. There is no one here. <laughs> it's the way to go, retail. I know you're thinking wholesale. Forget about it. Forget, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. It's retail. Uh, I started out, I sat back where Bob is sitting the first time I was in this class, before I had anything. And Steve professed wholesale. And he told you to go at 9.30 in the morning to the restaurants. The chef is there preparing for the day. Bring him your ice cream, talk to him. And I did that. And one morning I went out and I went to five different places and every one of them said, we love it, we'll take it, we'll sell it. Every one of them. But then three days later I pulled them out. Ah. That'll cost you five dollars to know why. <laughs> I pulled it out because a, you lose your identity. You lose the one-on-one -on -one of people enjoying your ice cream. But more importantly, when I went back to check on the product, the scoops were disgusting. The tops were off of the ice cream. There was frost in it. Some of the ice cream was put in the freezer with sausages, so they picked up that smell. They weren't taking care of it. I left them all a nice rag to use. It was disgusting. And this was consistent in each of the five places that morning. Consistent. And after the fifth place, when I went back, because I walked in, hey, Jeff, everything's great. They love your ice cream. But then you look at it, and you have to start scraping the tops off because it's all frost, because they didn't put the covers over the tubs of ice cream. And the scoop is sitting in a can of putrid water. The rag is disgusting. So I made a decision and I pulled it out. And then, quick quick funny story, quick? All the time you Okay, so I brought it back to my little ice cream making facility, which was then eight feet by seven feet. That was what I was making ice cream in, a little back room of a gym, actually. A back room with a little faucet in a sink. And I brought it back there and I was very dejected. You know, my whole life's plan was now down the drain. And I'm sitting there and then I hear, and there's a door, I open it up and the people are in the gym all over the place and there's a man standing there and he says, you sell ice cream? I said, yeah. He said, what do you got? I said, I have coconut. I only have one flavor, I have coconut. He said, how much? So I said, uh, $2. He said, I'll take one. So I scooped it in a water, bathroom water cup with a spoon and I gave it to him, he gave me $2 and I put it in my pocket, and I'm sitting there not thinking anything else. 10 minutes later, and I figured the guy's dying from eating the ice cream. So I open the door, and there's a family of four, two adults, two kids. 
And I said, yes. He says, you sell ice cream. I said, yeah. He said, what do you got? I said, uh, coconut. He said, well, take for how much is it? I said, uh, $3. <laughs> so he said, we'll take four. This is a true story. He said, we'll take four. So I went and did four water cups, Dixie bathroom cups of ice cream with spoons. And he handed me a 10 and two ones. And they left. And I sat there. And I, I, I looked at the 10 and two ones. And I'm in the back room of a gym. An eight feet by seven feet room. I showed you the room and I showed you the little sink, a little nine inch sink in there. And I was making ice cream there in the back of a gym. They're sweating, there's music playing, there's smelly carpet uh, on treadmills, all lifting free weights. And this guy came and, and, and I'm looking at $12 and the light bulb went off. I understand your desire for wholesale, but the light bulb went off. I didn't advertise. Nobody knew anything about me. I'm in a back room of a gym. They have to walk through a gym. So how do they know about me? And then why did they give me $12 just on, on good faith that the ice cream is going to be good? And they did. And that was the start of everything. That's, that was uh, the first $12 of the million that I made. Now he's got the condo in New Smyrna, the Corvette, the... Uh... Yeah, that's irrelevant. That's, those are all frills. <laughs> and we all like frills. But the good part is that when people come into my store, I know absolutely, 100%, no shadow of a doubt, they're going to eat the best ice cream on the planet. And that's a great feeling. They can go to the supermarket, they can buy Ben and Jerry's, they can, they, whatever, wherever they go, they're not gonna have ice cream as good as mine. And I'm sure of it. I'm not just boasting, I'm sure of it. I mean, what we just made here, that was uh, pretty, pretty much on a whim, pretty good though. And we have more yet to come. So that's what makes me feel good. The other stuff is all frills. Not that frills are bad. And you started with 82 square feet. I started with 856 square feet, 56 square feet, eight feet by seven feet, with a, a six quart machine. Yeah, and uh, and I I did that for just under a year, and then I needed the bigger machine, and I bought more space, and now I have uh, 3,600 square feet, uh, but we're still only open at Which night. It's a gigantic store. It's big. Uh, we have a stage with music, and and we seat 150. It's pretty cool. And that's where the class is. That's where they all were the last couple of days. So okay. now we're going to make banana Italian ice because it's one of my favorites. Um, water, tap water, sugar, and we'll have the formula up for you up on the website. I had to make some last minute changes. Um, so, and sugar dissolves very easily in cold water. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do anything special. What's the banana difference here? Um, there's still some here left. That's, uh, I think that's about almost five pounds. Of almost. Bananas. You want to use this? Yeah. Okay. I think that's going to be enough. But we'll okay. taste it. You make stretch? Excuse me? All your flavors to flavor. Most of the time, yes. Stretch. Yeah. I mean, if I'm, making, if I'm making something for kids, if I'm making uh, cotton candy, uh, then I'm using I rice flavors. Mm. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if, you, if you want to make something uh, that yeah, the kids want, this is, this is very simple and easy because there's no cotton candy trees growing in Florida. <laughs> All right, so even if I don't have this completely mixed up and there's a little, uh, and there's a little bit of drizzle of sugar, it won't matter because it was uh, two pounds of sugar, or a pound and a half of sugar into 14 quarts of water. Make sure the gate's closed. Pour it in the opening here. Whoops. Okay, we're going to turn it on, uh, I'm going to take the infinite overrun control, hit Italian ice, or if you want to get fancy, we'll call it something else. We'll go to uh, sorbet, how about that? We'll start there, because they're the same product. And I can start my freezing right away, and I wash my hands, and I'm going to pull. And I'll hold it, you put it in. Okay. 
I found out from one uh, parent that uh, he was using my videos to keep his kids occupied on weekends, like Sesame Street when he had to babysit. He had a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and he said he walked by the room, and I was doing this into the machine, and he turned. the six-year-old turns to the three-year-old and says, now don't try this with a tailor, <laughs> because the openings aren't large enough. You can't do this with a Capizani. It just physically is impossible. And that's something. Now, what we're really showing you here is flavor. Teamwork. That's what we're Teamwork showing. Teamwork and flavor. I haven't had this much fun. <laughs> Oops. Now, since these are soft, it's going to grind them all up. Uh, like a Cuisinart, and for every particle of sugar water, I'm going to have a particle of banana. And this will take longer to freeze because of the high sugar content of all these bananas. We have enough yet? Or? No, there's yeah. never enough. You know that. Jeff is too much. Uh, based on previous times I've done it. So the formula will be up at the website. Uh, I was going to make it with some other ingredients and I couldn't get permission from the manufacturer to do it, so I couldn't do it. All right. Is that it? Just water, sugar, and bananas? It's banana ice. Wow, that's pretty good. Do we want to try it? Well, as soon as they see if we want to put in blends up a little, extract. I think we're going to throw all those in too. Okay, I do have some all natural banana extract here from Green Mountain Flavors. Uh, Stan Sitton owns the company, and he's a genius at making things all natural. Uh, a story I tell over and over again, so apologize if you've heard it before, but he sends me a jar like this of concentrated beet juice up in the Bronx. And I, I called up Stan and I said, Stan, you realize I'm in a murder a week uh, South Bronx location. Do you really think I'm gonna sell beet juice Italian ice? He goes, no, Steve, beets are the reddest thing in nature. We distill them down, we concentrate it, and we turn it into a color. Uh, so that instead of red dye 40, you've got your red, bright red cherry ice coming from uh, beet juice. And this is an all natural banana flavor. Uh, that um, Ooh, that's good. is, um, well, it doesn't say what, what the ingredients are, but most, most everything comes from plants. Uh, I need to make a sea mist green ice cream for, uh, for uh, uh, an engagement party for a relative. And I called up Stan, and a week later, I had this formulation on my desk, and we poured it in, made the most beautiful color you've ever seen. So that's Green Mountain Flavors, and they are not in Vermont. They are in Oswego, O-S-W-E-G-O, -E Oswego, Illinois. And uh, the president uh, of Green Mountain Flavors is a gentleman named Stan Sitton, S-I-T-T-O-N. And again, every time, I seem to have an ego problem. Every time my ego gets away from me, and I think I'm the smartest person on earth, this little devil shows up on my shoulder and says, no, you're not. Stan Sitton is. <laughs> and he's the ego in Oswego. Yes. Well, he doesn't, he's not any, he, he just, you know, he walks, he talks the talk. He gets it done. Wow, we're coming out the top here. Holy cow, why do you think? I think I got too much stuff in there. I may have to let some out. Just, well, just take some liquid out. I will. And that way we'll put more bananas in. <laughs> Okay, I might as well taste this and see how we're doing. See, when, I'm, when Jeff makes ice cream and ices and everything else, he knows in advance what everything's gonna be like. I sit in front of a computer and, and just figure, what would this be like mathematically? And we'll see what happens. So some of my ice creams and ices are just god awful. Uh, but uh, um, most of them are good. Let's try a little bit of his extract in there. Where is it? I just had my hand. Just a little bit. Yeah. Like a cap, a couple of capsules. Not too much. Whoa, that's good. <laughs> it's strong stuff. It's very scientific. I yeah. Think. There's a, there's enough here to f uh, flavor five thousand gallons. That's it. Oh, 
That's good. That's good. That is good. We might add a half a cap more. Yeah. Okay. Why not? <laughs> that was a big half a cap. <laughs> but see, this too is much flavor. This is the fun of making ice cream. But there is one, you know, down to business part of what you're doing here is you've got to sit here with three by five file cards and write down and say batch number two banana ice and write it down what you did. How much did we actually put in there? Because I guarantee you, uh, you make three or four batches and you're going to hit on the perfect flavor and you're going to go, what did I do? What did I put in there? And you won't remember from batch one to batch four. And I don't think there's a flavor in the world. How many batches would you have to make to make a perfect ice cream if you were starting a new flavor from scratch? One, two, three, one. Okay, I take three flavors, uh, three batches to come up with the perfect flavor. But that's all. I speak to a lot of people and I'm a lousy salesman, I'll tell you. Because they call up and they say, oh, I want to get the 200, I want to get the 350. And I'm not opening for a year and a half, but I want to experiment in my kitchen. And I'm so stupid, I say, that's crazy. You know, Nike said, just do it. Call me when you're ready to go into business and we'll sell you a machine. And then I realized I was losing so many sales because the millennials, I hate to pick on them, but I've got four of them, um, they like to first form a corporation and uh, then everybody uh, gets a title and then everybody gets a leased BMW and then they want to experiment for uh, two years on formulas. And I say, but the formula is already at my website. All you have to do is tweak it to your own personal taste. And I was losing sales because they, didn't, they wanted to buy a machine in practice. So now I say, oh yeah, great idea practice. Uh, but it's not that hard. It's, I don't know what baking would be like. I can't bake. Uh, I can't cook. I'm sorry, what? This is a, uh, I don't think we can get that on camera. The biggest machine is the 44 quart. That's, uh, one's a 12 and one's a 24. The biggest one on the right is the 44. That's what this gentleman's going to walk out with today. We're going to put it in the back of his car. It's only 1,200 pounds. 24, 12. 24 and 12 are identical uh, in design. Six, uh, three, and the new one over here, one, one and a half. Yeah. Now, the 12 quart, I think because it's YouTube, we can't say prices, but they're at the website, what you'll pay for it. But there's only a $2,000 difference between the 12 and the 24. So for two grand, you're doubling your production. Or more importantly, since we're pushing towards $15 an hour, you're cutting your labor cost in half by buying this one. So your two choices of going into business are either the six or the 24. And you'll never find any of them used because they don't wear out. My customers don't go out of business. I've got an incredible success rate. And nobody sells them because when they call me up and they say they, say they want to sell their machine, I go, don't do it. Because you've been in business with this for a year, two years, three years, and uh, you're desperately running at 18 hours a day and you desperately need a 24. And they say, well, I'll sell this off. How much should I ask for? Well, about a thousand less than you paid for it three years ago. I said, but don't do it. Because the day you put it up on eBay is the day, and it sells in two hours. They don't go more than two and a half hours. Uh, people call up, but I saw it on eBay two days ago. <laughs> Lady, that thing went days ago. Um, instead of selling it off, because the day you do is the day that your best friend walks through the door breathlessly and says, you know that location we were talking about, maybe 20 miles away that's only 500 square feet? I just found it, and we could put the CB350 up there. And he goes, oh, I just sold it. And it's a little too far to ship the ice cream, but it's ideal for a second store. So you'll never find them used. I got a call this morning, an email, email rather. The guy's machine, I looked it up, it, had, it, it was uh, 92 years old. 92 years old. And it's in a 1950s, uh, you know, one of those drive-ins where they come out on the roller skates and the machine's just sitting there. And he said, how much should I ask for it on eBay? <laughs> and I said, this is not uh, a Picasso painted over uh, to look like, you know, six dogs playing uh, poker. I mean, the, the, this machine has zero value. It won't meet any codes whatsoever. 
92 years old and it's running. It breaks my heart. But that's what we do. Steve, I know the, the 24 quart, 8 gallons. How does that break down for a, a, a price point on what it costs to make the ice cream? Oh, uh, uh, regular, just a basic ice cream to maybe the big one where it's got brownies, well, the chips. I can't, I can't give you an exact figure on cost without knowing your mix cost because it varies. Right, but a generalization good. would be about $20 for a three gallon tub. Now, take keep in mind though that for every tub of maple walnut, which might be $27, you're selling 10 tubs of vanilla, which probably costs 18. So your average is gonna be somewhere around $20 for a three gallon tub. Then you multiply that by $4, and there's, uh, uh, if you did four ounces, it's 92 portions, and you're talking a lot of money. Jeff is right, the money is better in retail per scoop than it is wholesale. And wholesale people don't like to pay their bills, and they're used to not paying their bills. All, I mean, everybody wants their business so much that they let them slide for six months, and you're dying on the vine uh, because you've got 20 of these people, and they're not paying their bills. Best thing that ever happened to uh, best thing that ever happened to the ice cream business was a little plastic piece called the square that fits into your phone, and you can zip your credit card because the kids aren't carrying money anymore. They all have mom and dad's credit cards. And where we used to go out, you know, back when I went to Rollins, uh, you know, we, I'd play big man on campus. Come on, I'm gonna buy everybody a beer. Everybody in the car, I'm gonna buy them a beer. Well, now it's an ice cream cone, and I'm, I'm 13 years old, and I've got my own credit card, and I'm playing big man on campus, buying everybody an ice cream, because it doesn't, I don't care what the price is, it's going to mom and dad anyway. I'm gonna check this. That's looking pretty good. I might give it another minute. And then we'll have the banana. But you see how easy that is? I mean, Jeff used to sit in the back. He told me this in private. He said, I used to sit back there and go, you know, if that idiot Steve Thompson can do this, imagine what I could make. And I hear that a lot nowadays. I think you're telling people. But uh, it really is as simple as we make it look. There's nothing to it. What do you think? Is this ready? By your standard? No. No more. Yeah. Okay. I like the flecks in there. Yes, yeah, so if you see dark flecks in there, that is banana. What are you doing with that? We're taking it for Paula. <laughs> No, no, I never did a museum. When I was growing up, we had a Quonset hut built by the U.S. Army for us because we were making shell casings uh, for bombs. And that whole Quonset hut was filled with used machines. And the low man, uh, the old machines taken in. And low man on the totem pole, me, was driving the truck and had to haul these things out and get them in the truck and dump them in the Quonset hut. So I've got this thing about not wanting a museum. <laughs> so I don't have anything over around here. Ready? All this thing around here, I want to take a Ready? Yes. All right, so here we go. Can you got the cameras on it? Refrigeration's off. Wait, do you taste this? Whoa. I gotta get a little one. Wow, that's heavy. Oh, yeah, that's is. heavy. You want Good to shake stuff. that off, this off? Mike, mm -hmm. can you use the newer blades in your older machines? Okay. Um, we have Either newer I blades for the older machines. Eat some. But not the spring loaded. It would be too expensive to change. So that one batch, that's six uh, liters right there, plus this. So even though they, we rate the machine at six quarts, you can see it makes more than that. This is so good. I'm going to have this. Thank you. 
Are there lids or covers for the uh, lotto? Christy, like like you, I know you got the gallons. Hello, for you. anybody? Base cover? Don't know. Um, you wouldn't freeze that like you're doing in the gallon. It's just like that soup. What could be bad? For yes. For the July yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> it's fresh ice cream. Uh, yes. Thank you. That's Emily's new favorite. Am I eating yeah. it? <laughs> hey, Paula, here's your new favorite good. Italian ice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Nana. Nana. It's Nana. Isn't that great? Good. That's great. I'm sure you do. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank you. Mike. Oh, good. Sugar, water, and bananas. How how easy can get? And a little bit of the Green Mountain extract, which I really bolstered the flavor. And the, and it's all natural. Completely all natural. Finally, and a good one. Beep, beep. I don't spell. <laughs> yes. Let's try it. Thank you. Should I make more coffee or nay? Um, well, lunchtime is coming, so probably so. So much with that aggressive. You could make cream ice out of that. That would be by just by just adding some of the ice cream mix that Jeff yeah. uses. Yeah, one and, quart. And, and, and that would just like you could put grain crackers in it. I yeah. Mean, I think that could really you could do a lot with that. Yeah. That that base there. No, the whole yeah. trick is the fresh bananas and, and the uh, extract wherever it went. I love bananas, that, that's great. <laughs> okay, Jeff's gonna okay, make something attention. else. Ready? Yes, sir. Sebastian, ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the school teacher in me. <laughs> it's the, you know, Sebastian, are you ready? Which means, hey, come on, knock it off, sit down. Hey, you only open four hours, so if everybody talks, you're not selling ice cream. <laughs> you're right. We <laughs> don't ice cream. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Two ingredients. I mean, how simple is this? Yeah, it's really good. Good. And you could... So next week you can add maraschino cherries and have cherry banana Italian ices. You know, anything. You can add a little amaretto. Amaretto, banana, Italian. I mean, that's the art of this thing. It's, it's, this is way cool. Yeah, you can add coffee. Coffee, no, no coffee. <laughs> we were just discussing how this would probably be your highest power. Why did you bring them a tub of uh, green? Don't, don't, don't wait for these back. Don't Correct. Wait for the Correct. I have some hands left over since you all leave. Leslie, Leslie just pointed out a good thing. Uh, probably the most important thing. Right, Sebastian? Excuse me? Yeah. My boss is talking to me. Leslie, <laughs> Leslie just pointed out a, a great thing. You see, I was not the worst one. <laughs> Ready, Michael? Okay. It's the school teacher. That you never want to, you know, yell at somebody, but silence does a better job. You know. Just, <laughs> so Leslie pointed out a great thing. We talked in class about the numbers and the profit. That was all based on ice cream. And the big cost in ice cream 
Not that it matters because you're in business for this, but the big cost is the bladders, the ice cream mix. Those are 22 to 23 dollars each bladder. Well, Leslie reminded me just now, that's not here. We have two ingredients, sugar, water obviously, but bananas that are virtually free because you're buying the overripe ones from the store or getting them for free. So, not bad. I mean, we're, we're nearing 95% uh, profit on this, on what you just ate, and it's pretty darn good. You, it's certainly saleable. Quick question. How, how many other foods can you buy that's overripe besides bananas you can use? Well, let me see. There's peaches, cherries, apples, peaches, cherries, apples, cantaloupe, honeydew. What's the batch of? Taste funny. No, they. All you're getting is more sugar. You're not reducing any flavor. All you're doing is increasing the sugar, right? You, this is your business, right? Yeah. So the, I mean, different times of year you're going to get more sugar in the in whatever fruit. This is a great time of year for honeydews. Right now you're going to get high. High sugar honeydews, but otherwise, if you have a mediocre honeydew, maybe you just add some more sugar. I would guess. Or let it ripen. Yeah, let it ripen, sit out. Let it sit out and ripen. Uh, I know it's not as good as farm ripened, but when we have, when we want to use fruit that's not ripe, like peaches, sometimes they're hard as potatoes. But if we put them in a brown bag and let them sit, which is a great. Alfie brought, brings up a good point. This is why, in my world, we don't use fresh fruit. We always use frozen fruit, because frozen fruit is always frozen at the height of its ripeness, or when it's ready to be sold, they freeze it, uh, hopefully. <laughs> but that's, that's why the cherries and the peaches and, and all the fruits, strawberries, blueberries, that's why they're more expensive frozen, but they're consistent. So I can make... Uh, blueberries are in season here in July. My wife picks blueberries in July in Florida, June and July, and they're delicious. So she picks bags and bags and freezes them so that we can have the same sweet, whole flavor fruit in January. And that's the same philosophy in the ice cream. I want my customers not to come in in January and have my cherry vanilla and do, you know, no good. So we want them the day they were picked frozen as sweet as they were when I gave them to them in the summer. So, uh, yes. Where, where do you get your uh, frozen food from? Restaurant Depot. I have one. You have one? There's one by you, right? Where do you live? Miami. Miami, of course, you got Restaurant Depot right there. You can also get it in Costco, BJ's, or Sam's Club. But Restaurant Depot has a great variety of frozen fruits in sizable bags that we can use. Uh, the other thing I do for my cherry vanilla, I import cherries from Door County, Wisconsin. Known for their cherries, right. Uh, and they are superb. Door County, Wisconsin, cherries are superb. Just like Colorado, I was motorcycling through Colorado, and my wife said, don't forget... Oh, Amber Alert. It's your fault. Amber Alert. Okay. I stole your car. Uh, my wife called me when I was on the motorcycle trip, and she said, don't forget to get Palisades Peaches in Colorado. There's a special place right off the highway. So here I am on my motorcycle, loading my saddlebag with peaches from, uh, Palis I think it was Palisades <laughs> County Peaches in Colorado. But there are certain areas uh, that you can't beat the, the specific fruits. For the next thing, Go for it. That's awful. We all do. For the next thing, uh, also from my original book, these are 20, 10 years old, uh, and we still run these in the store. These are unbelievable. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Now, I have to warn you. When I invented Bride of Frankenstein, it was so good that every night I took home a quart, every night took home a quart, 
and ate it watching TV. And of course, uh, but not really, right? So this is bright. The other one was Frankenstein, darker chocolate. This is brighter Frankenstein, white and white chocolate and golden Oreos or blonde Oreos, I call them. I don't know. So now remember, what did we run in here before? Chocolate, Frankenstein. What was in the Frankenstein? Chocolate. Chocolate mix, chocolate chips, brownies, right? Now, I did let it, most of it run out. Do I have to rinse the machine now? No. No, of course not, because we're adding, first of all, these machines, I guess, I don't know if you know, the cylinder is canted five degrees. Five degrees? Mm -hmm. Is canted five degrees. So when you extract product, you saw how fast it was, but that's only half the story. The other half is how complete it is. Yeah, there may be an Aaron chocolate chip in here, and there may be three ounces of chocolate mix in here, <clears throat> and maybe a few brownie crumbs. Uh, but is that going to matter with 10 quarts of white mix in it? No, won't matter at all. Okay? You can rinse if you want. Yes? Does it have to do with... I mean as far as personal preference, uh, whether it's rinse or not, or the time between you making it. Well, here's what I base it on. I base it on the inclusions. Uh, if I had run cherry vanilla before this, I would rinse it now. Because I don't want cherries in my Bride of Frankenstein. Or mint. Mint is the ultimate rinse product. You, every time you make mint chocolate chip ice cream, you've got to rinse the machine. Because mint pervades other flavors even a small amount, and I don't want mint in my next flavor. But when I'm planning my production for the day, as we did, right, we planned it in order. We, we set our cards in order of production, and Steve and I disagree on this. Steve says all the white ice cream and all the brown ice cream, uh, that is of no consequence to me. What I care about are the inclusions. If something has chocolate chips, I don't want to run coconut next without rinsing because in the coconut ice cream that people are eating, there's going to be what looks like a bug. <laughs> it's only a chocolate chip, but I don't want anything disturbing the pure whiteness of it. So I would rinse, but I wouldn't make them in that order because I'd rather have a stray piece of coconut in my other ice cream than a chocolate chip in a... Is that only me? Don't you all get these? That's not me. No, it's everybody else is getting them. See, I get it first, because they know I'm like Superman. I'm... <laughs> All right, so we'll start. Now, by the way, this is interesting. The... Everybody has a grandmother. The grandmother made soup. When the grandmother made soup, she had the chickens, she had the onions, she had the leeks, she had the carrots, and everything she put into the pot. And the soup was then very good, right? It's the same thing with the ice cream. If you put good stuff in, even if it's not exactly as you envision, it's going to get good stuff out. It's just the nature of it. This is, this is great. You can throw this in with nothing else and come out with decent vanilla ice cream. Not what I would sell, but decent van homemade vanilla ice cream. So everything that you add to this, if it's of quality, is going to make a great ice cream. It only makes sense. Is this on? Yes. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> the glaze over there. No. Soft serve is, uh, can I say crap on TV? You can. Okay, soft serve is crap. All right, so same thing. We're going to take this, confidently throw the lid away, grab the bottom, and in we go. And it's so nice to have a 24 quart machine here. So nice for you, you get to keep all the ice cream. That's right. You can bribe all my banks with it. And you have a lot of them. I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
So what we're going to add to bride of Frankenstein, we're going to add white chocolate chips. Remember, Frankenstein was dark chocolate chips. This is bride of Frankenstein, white chocolate chips. And we're going to add blonde Oreos instead of dark uh, brownies with fudge on it. And then we're going to add secret ingredient that I can't tell you what it is. Why? What? <laughs> 25 cents and I'll whisper it to you. <laughs> All right, so we're all set with this. This is, this is Heath Bar pieces. Uh, and you know what Heath, I mean, gee. Have you had Ben and Jerry's Heath Bar oh, Crunch? Yeah, yes. Outstanding, yes. great ice cream. This is better though. All right, so we're ready to roll. Why can't I get it to... Uh, Full speed ahead, Captain. What? Yeah. Uh, white chocolate chips. Don't try this at home. Uh, I don't, hang on. When I add chocolate chips, who asked me that? Oh, never mind. <laughs> when I add chocolate chips to a batch, it's generally... No, I didn't. It's, <laughs> it's generally a quart. Like this is a quart of Heath Bar pieces. Now, since these are all solid pieces, they're not going to break up any further. They're going to stay at this consistency. Give it a little crunch and a little flavor. No. Oh, if you took whole walnuts and threw them in, it would break them into quarters, which is where we want them. But whole walnuts are very expensive, so why not buy a five-pound bag of walnut pieces, and they won't break up any further. So we save money, and we're still getting the good ingredients. The Oreo yeah. cookies will break up. There's a cool method to adding cookies, like when I make Oreo or this. If you put them like this and skirt them down the front, they all go right down the gullet. Now you're just playing with your food. <laughs> How many should we add? All of it. All of them. That's a good idea. Now, just so you, I'm going to take one. Just so you can know how to make Oreo cookie ice cream, I take one one-pound bag and throw <laughs> it in the machine. That's my fruit f flavor or my Oreo cookie flavor. The second bag, I while it's running, I just snap them between my thumbs, and I've got four pieces, and I throw that in a bucket. I do that with all of them. And then when the ice cream's coming out, the first uh, box got pulverized. These pieces I'm going to shake in as it's coming out. So I've got my Oreo cookie flavor in the machine, and I've got my Oreo cookie identity. What is this uh, in the ice cream? So you get the best of both worlds. Don't try that with a Capigiani <laughs> or a Taylor. Taylor's out of the business. Yeah, they went out of the they went out of the batteries of business two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey Jeff. Because of what he said, I'm holding back some, so every ice cream now will get a scoop of ice cream and a cookie. Hey, we spare no expense here. But I'll add a few more anyway. This. It's just fun to do. It is. It's very fun to do. In the newer models, we're adding an electronic burp. <laughs> okay, you had or a question. Me. The, the heat bar pieces, the, did you ninja those? The heat bar? No, I buy them in the bags like that. The Restaurant the Depot sells cookie pieces, uh, Oreos in bags, uh, three pound, uh, 
three or two and a half pound bags of broken up Oreos, which is the greatest thing for the, when they sat around the table at Oreo, we have all this mess here, all this uh, broken cookies and everything. What should we do with them? Put them in bags and sell them uh, at, at big bulk stores. If your space is limited, yes. what? if your space is limited, would you go for a bigger, for a walking street, three to a walking street? Can only do one of them. Why don't you answer that? No. Huh? You answer that. I mean, it's a walk-in freezer or what? Or a walk-in freezer. Okay. Can you do one of the two? They're both uh, at the end of my driveway now waiting for the dumpster people to throw them away. Because you don't need either one. No matter how much space you have. No matter how much space you have. Waste of money. Waste of money. You don't need. He's open from 6 until 10 and doesn't let children I could in. be open 24-7 yes. and I wouldn't have them. Just make sure on the map, the bladder is 10 quarts, right? Yes, and it makes 20 quarts of ice cream. You should be able to freeze the food. It doubles. The bladder doubles. Yes. Now, if you want a heavier ice cream, we have a setting that says super premium, which slows it down and it will give you less air. Uh, you can slow it down even further to the gelato setting or the frozen custard, and it becomes very, very dense, uh, just like haagen -Dazs. But your costs have to go up appreciably. Uh, Daniel, understand that I'm in business primarily to make money. That's my primary goal is to make money. To maximize how much money I'm making, if you spend that much, you're breaking even. The less you spend, the more you make. So useless equipment, a, uh, a 16, a 16 tub dipping cabinet with a sneeze guard on it, don't buy it. You don't need it. It's a waste of money. Okay, now I will counter and say, do, do the math. There are probably a thousand people who have listened to Jeff over the years and are Jeff's way. I have 37,000 people who are doing it with hardening cabinets and dipping cabinets. There is no wrong way to sell ice cream. You have to see what's right for you. And I say it depends on the location and how the ice cream is being sold. He has a rush from 6 until 10, and that's it. Your ice cream parlor is probably going to be 11 a.m. till 10 p.m., and it's a whole different ball game of handling the ice cream. There's no wrong answer except his is different from the vast majority of people. Doesn't make it wrong, just makes it different. Well, I'll tell you what. Give me one reason, just one, why they should have a 16-tub display sneeze-guarded dipping case. Give because, me one. Okay, if you catch the flu and are out for a week, you're out of business. What? You don't have any inventory. What are you talking about? You can't no, we're talking about a dipping cabinet. I know, and you're making ice cream all day long, because with that dipping cabinet also goes the hardening cabinet, where I'm making ice cream on Tuesday to last me until Saturday. I make, you don't 300, have, I make 300 gallons a week in one day. I know, but if you weren't there to make the 300 gallons for the week, they'd be have to close the doors. Why? Because there's nobody else to... Because I don't no, have an inventory? Because you don't have an inventory. I got freezers with ice cream up the wazoo. Okay, you don't have enough up inventory. Up the wazoo. Well, we've been, we've been talking this one since 2007. But as far Do as... Do your the, homework, pick the location that you're doing, and see what's right for you. That's the best way to say it. Let me ask you a question. Not the Don't same one. If you do a big, you know, we do a lot of big festivals. Yeah. If you do a big festival and you only got like four or six tubs, you're gonna run out fast. Yeah. Right. I do it. So don't you think you should have a bigger unit? Yes. Or have a van with a compressor in it with that. another I'm freezer. Saying, just say people like to move fast. You know they do. They, they not. You don't have them. They gonna walk away. So what we what I try to do I try, I try to have it right there so they can have it. like I'd rather have two vanillas right there with me or two whatever with me. Absolutely. So I can have it right on stock so I don't even buy it. I can give it to them. So of course. you have to have a bigger unit to sell. Right? Sure. 
You won. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> how's, that, how's that ice cream coming? <laughs> how about them Yankees? <laughs> You'd think we'd get tired of doing this, wouldn't you? <laughs> and uh, there was one year he flattened my tires. There was a year I shot at him. <laughs> but we get along. What were we compared to? That was pretty insulting. Mutton Jeff? <laughs> was it? No. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Nobody knows what the Bickersons are. <laughs> You are just <laughs> autographed him. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> autographed him. Of course he will. I'm nobody. Yes, you are. You are. What are you doing? You are while we're here. You're doing the stand-up. Whatever, he, uh -huh. whatever, you whatever he charges for an autograph, I'll do it half price. That 44-quart machine? I'm why they're here. <laughs> Are we, are we paying attention to our ice cream? Yeah. Do you see how great this is? Everything's shaking, and the, the shelf I'm, is holding in place. Again, my, my bladders. Preston? Um, I'm, I'll have to call you back. What's the latest I can call you? I'll call you in about a half hour. Okay, thanks. Bye. Jeff, if you're having so much trouble with your bladders, you might want to try salt palmetto. Oh. <laughs> you have yes, it will work in this. Uh, you just uh, divide them down. Uh, you've got the six quart, the big one. Yeah, it, it'll it'll work. Unbelievable. It depends on the size of it. They, they, these used to come in five gallon. Okay, mine is a six quart. Six quart. Well, you only want to put uh, uh, with salt and ice. I'd say three and a half quarts of liquid in. So just make my full batch and pour in what you need. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same ice cream, only you'll have larger ice crystals because you're freezing in 40 minutes, we're freezing in 8 minutes. But that's the only difference. The taste will be there. Yeah, but I want to say. I know, I will buy one, but it has a That's You're selling used machines in my store? No, I said I know a guy who can sell you one of those pointing to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any real questions? <laughs> Any questions back there? No, they're busy talking to themselves. Yeah. Any questions? No? Daniel? Daniel? How many people are uh, planning to go into the ISIS business? Into the what? ISIS. ISIS? Italian ISIS. Okay. And the rest are ice cream. <laughs> the rest ice cream. Okay. Yeah, careful how you phrase that. Go into the ISIS business. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we also sell Sam's. <laughs> AK 47s in that room. We're good. Yeah. Oh, I have some things to show you. I have show and tell. This one you've seen before if you've watched the videos. Uh, this is a, uh, holds a tub. You freeze this down and it's got uh, some kind of glycol solution in here so you freeze it and it'll stay frozen for hours. So you can, if you're running a push cart, you can just drop your tub right in there. And um, that works very well. You can get about uh, three or four hours out of that. Uh, it's made by Carlisle. Uh, but you can find it anywhere. They're about $87 for each one. A customer called me up and he said, you got to try these. These come in different sizes. Um, let's see who makes this. Arctic Ice, A-R-T-I-C Ice. 
the Tundra series. They have about four different ones. This one doesn't freeze solid until uh, I think it's minus five degrees. So if you know, if ice of course freezes and melts at 32 degrees. So if you add four of these in a cooler, one, two, three, four, he says you can keep your ice easily for four or five hours at a at a trade show, a fair, uh, you know, push cart type deal, because freezing at minus five, it's going to thaw much much slower. So Paula was saying, you know, what good is this for my daily lunch to bring because uh, our freezer only goes to zero? Well, it's still going to thaw a lot slower. But if you add a chest freezer at minus ten, this is an inexpensive way. This is the trund tundra version of the Arctic ice. You can get these at Amazon. Uh, the price at Amazon is about a dollar cheaper than buying direct from the company. But uh, if you're buying in quantity, you could try talking to them. But uh, we've been using these for a couple of weeks, and uh, I think they're great. This is one of the smaller ones. This will just fit. <coughs> People don't know how to pack a cooler. They put the ice on the bottom and all the food on top. Wrong. Cold air falls. Put the food and the sodas in the bottom and then lay this on top and all the cold is dropping down like that and it does a nice job. So something new besides uh, doing it this way for your Italian ice push cart. Here we go. It looks good and it doesn't look like the uh, any residue that was left in the machine had any effect on the ice cream cup. It won't. Because there wasn't enough left in there. Okay. Uh, covers. You don't want to try this, do you? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's give it a shot. Come on out. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Um, not, not exactly, no, because gelato is basically an ice cream with different flavoring. It's a lower fat, so it's ice cream. Uh, and it's different flavors. It's tiramisu, fruit of Bosco. We're making pumpkin and Frankenstein. Uh, you could call this Frankenstein gelato if you wanted to. There wouldn't be any difference. I want to get those three compartment things that you have, that divider and the two of them. Can I get that from you, both of them, today? I don't know if we have them for today, but uh, I'll find out for you. Otherwise, we can send them to you. Hmm? They what is it? Tell me the mommies, that's what, when you said dairy-free, I was yeah. hoping I could get some of that so I could see the difference between that and the mommies. Is it really dairy-free? Yeah, it's coconut. It's coconut milk, cream of coconut, sugar, and that's it. You can formulate it yourself. I used to, but mine used to ice up, so I buy the, the mommies or mammies. It's M A M I S. Uh, she now also calls it Froco Nut. But yes, that's a batch freezer. That thing is. It it may not get cold enough. You need. Can you do Italian ice? I think I can. Yeah. If you can do Italian ice, you can do the mommies. Was that walking freezer? Yeah. You don't need Oh, I think, of course you do. Yeah. Because it's all dependent on volume. Jeff's making ice cream to sell ice cream from 6 until 10. You're making ice cream to sell maybe three times as many people. And so you've got to have three times as much ice cream. So your walk-in is your inventory. Uh, I would love to have a, a walk-in because not only would I keep my frozen ice cream in there, I'd buy 50 pound bags of walnuts because the price is better and I'd keep them in that freezer for months and pull them out as I need it. I'd keep everything in there. Uh, a walk-in would be great. Uh, a walk-in is just, you know, that, those are hardening cabinets over there that I built for myself. And they're energy guzzlers to keep the temperature. Uh, and, and with the commercial ones, every time you open the door, all the cold's falling out. And what makes it a hardening cabinet flash freezer or blast freezer is uh, their design. If you take just a true cabinet and set it to 20 below and load it up with all this warm ice cream, the temperature's going to skyrocket up. 
With a hardening cabinet, it will, or a walk-in, it's going to stay cold. Come on, get over here. I like the chocolate. Come on. No, really. Sure. So, so, okay. Can't have chocolate. So the ice cream is going into, the, into the, 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 the freezer. It can stay there. And then it goes in the dipping cabinet to serve. Yes. So they can stay in there. There's no... Months. Limit. Okay. Yeah. Months. And then when I move it into the dipping cabinet, uh, I'm doing it tonight at 11 o'clock so that at 11 tomorrow it will have tempered up. So here's the routine. You've made six batches of vanilla. You've got them in your walk-in or your hardening cabinet. They're in there frozen solid. They're going to stay. Tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. We're going to go through uh, two tubs of vanilla. So I take two tubs out of there at 30 below and I put them in my dipping cabinet at six above and they warm up overnight. But now business gets bigger and I'm not going to go through two tubs. I'm going to go through five tubs. So tonight at 11 o'clock I take five tubs out of there, I put two in that dipping cabinet, and I put three over in that cabinet set at zero. So they're warming up and they're very close to scooping temperature. That's double decker, so as I go through one tub, I bring up the next one, grab one from over there, put it down below, and, and that's that's how I rotate it. So you definitely, because we've been a work, we're the guys building our store from the ground up. We're building a brand new building and everything. So, Walking freezer all the way. Up. Yeah, all the way. Up. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a, it's a it's a tremendous asset. Now, one thing though that the walk-in people may not know, and you should at least ask them about it, is those temperatures. I mean, I, let me back up. Um, that cabinet over there is my cabinet is 30 below uh, because every time I open the doors, I'm losing cold. If I had a walk-in, I could do 20 below because I'm putting on my coat, I'm grabbing two tubs, and I'm going in there and putting them up on the shelves. Up on the shelves, I've got in that cabinet over there, they're in there real tight, and I've just put 100 gallons in real tight. <laughs> it's got to have <clears throat> real cold and a lot of air circulation. In my walk-in, I've got shelves like over there. So I've got a tub here, I've got a tub next to it with a couple inches, I've got a lot of airspace all going around the place, so I can do it at 20 below. Um, but the key thing is ask them about the insulation of the floor because if they're just taking a walk-in that was designed for zero degrees Fahrenheit and putting a bigger compressor on it, uh, the cold's gonna go right through your floor and in the middle of July, you're freezing. Okay, good. Good, yeah, what I use, I tell people if they buy some you know, old used machine uh, walk-in, go to Home Depot, you can buy uh, Formula R, it's uh, F-O-R-M-U-L-A-R, insulated core, and, and it's sheets, and you just plunk it down, put the box on top of it, and now you've got great insulation. Because I've had people freezing six feet of earth in July, and that's expensive. Uh, yeah. All good. All right, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. Could you, could you, could you open it? Um, not without making a huge mess. Uh, what's in it is this. That's all that's in there. That it's slightly angled? Yeah. Yes, we just we just we just added that a little while ago. And the infinite overrun. I love this. I love this. Yeah. It's very very smart. What the infinite overrun does, which is the real key to the machine, is um, if you want to have the difference between gelato and American ice cream, is the air content is one of the big things. So you slow down the Italian machine to produce a 50% overrun by spinning the motor slower. And of course the product comes out slower. If you, if you ha were in your house and in your dining room and you had uh, a light dimmer, uh, just a, uh, what they call a stack. you want to dim the lights down in the dining room for a nice dinner. You're taking the 100 watt bulb and you're robbing the power from it by dimming it. You're, you're robbing it down to 25 watts. If you do that on a machine, the machine needs 100 watts. It needs the full power of the motor to spin. And if you dim it down, now it's only at a quarter of its power it will lock up and stop so nobody's ever been able to put a dimmer on this is this invention of mine 
no matter what speed I pick. So let me just show you. Uh, here I am at homemade, and you'll see the revolutions per minute. It's, it's 234. If I want to do gelato, I want it uh, running much lower, so I tap that, and now I'm going to run, I'm spinning it slower, 140, half the speed. But the power of the motor is the same as if it was 234. And now you, and now you as an executive chef will say, well, Steve likes 140, but I like, you know, 155. So you can move it up and down. And the other thing is, you just made gelato at 140, you're taking it out, and you want to get the last bit out. So there's just a little bit left in, you want to speed up the so process. the less revolution, the less power the slow, Yes, exactly. Okay, so that was my question, why we had speed, because I have never yeah. worked with speed. Okay. So it was always one speed. Yeah, and we, only one speed. But I understand revolution per minute for bread making. Right. You know, the more, the, the, you know, your mixer, one, two, yeah. three speeds. Yeah, oh. if this was cream, yes. and I have a whisk, and I stir like this, it's going to remain cream because I can't stir it fast enough. If I then take an electric mixer and put it in here, now I have whipped cream. So the slower I spin it, the less air. The faster I spin it, I'm getting more air. So it's not necessarily time of spinning. That's right. It's speed of spinning. Speed of spinning and not time of spinning. Yes, because dairy is fat cells, unlike sorbet. Sorbet will expand as much as water will expand if you if you have a wood boat yes. and, and the lake freezes your boat's going to get crushed because water expands uh, that's normal expansion but dairy product are fat cells and they blow up they blow up so much that we have a legal limit in the United States of 100% overrun or double one gallon in two gallons out so a revolution per minute. So in one minute you have 145 or 234. So and everything in between. I, I, I thought that it would take the same amount of revolution per eight minutes to have your texture of the ice cream. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No? It takes a little bit longer for so, the gelato. So you'll still have the same revolution if it takes longer. Because if you go two or three minutes more, you're catching up on the 234. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, so why don't so, you spin it at the same speed? No, then I missed your point. No, it, so, it, if I, again, the mixer, the mixer cream, versus my hand. So ice cream, 234 revolution per minute. Yeah, okay. that's my electric mixer. Okay, so that's your ice cream. Yeah. And gelato, you said it's 140. For my machine, yes. For your machine. So, but if it takes a little longer, so you see, mm -hmm. it's on the green, like what we're talking. No, 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 no. That's no, if you, okay, oh, if, if, okay, let me do the. Okay, okay, technically, if I know what you're talking about, Two. technically, if you freeze it longer, it'll get stiffer and it loses some of the air, but you can't control it. You can't say how long do I leave it in here to make it stiffer, no, because, because been, you're going to risk to the point where you're going to lock up. Yeah, sure. So, eight minutes at two thirty-four is that number of revolution for eight minutes. You know what I mean? So divided by eight equal so two thirty-four times eight minutes. Let's say it doesn't seconds. matter about the number of revolutions. So it matters how fast they spin. So if I'm doing a hundred miles an hour yes. on the highway for four minutes, yes. I'm at risk of getting a, a ticket for four, uh, in four minutes. If I'm doing fifty miles an hour, I can go for an hour and never get a ticket. Uh, so it's it's not the number of revolutions. We're not trying to pack a lot of revolutions in. We're trying to not let the air expand. Okay. Again, the okay, same the understand. same analogy the same analogy is the no, no, whisk it, versus it. the mixer. So, the gelato is more dense than the ice cream. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. Oh my God. But if, because if you spawn the gelato at two thirty four, it would be ice cream. I get you. Yeah. No, I get you. And I know, and I know, gelato has less of some fat yes. than ice cream. I know that, but I, now I understand. I understand. Good.
<laughs> I have a little trouble with the math here. This is a 24 quart capacity. Finished capacity. Finished capacity. That's okay. So we're only putting 10 quarts mixed in. Yeah. We're running ice cream as if it was a 20 quart machine. And the reason is the mix comes in two and a half gallon bags. So you double it, you get 20 quarts. It would be a pain in the neck to reformulate that I'm going to put a whole bag in here plus another couple of quarts. That's not practical. So we just take a bag, we just take a bag and I wouldn't want to put too much mix in here to over, even though it says I've got 24 quart capacity and I'm only putting 10 quarts in. That's finished capacity. Yeah, it's not, it's not how much you put in. What's the ratio of unfinished capacity to finished capacity? 100%. I wouldn't want to put too much mix in. It's 50% air. Ice cream is 50% air. So I wouldn't want to ever exceed two and a half gallons. Well, yeah, but your mix, but your mix is, yeah, but I mean, you can put 12 quarts in and get 24 back, Right. but it'll take longer to freeze and your mix comes in two and a half gallon bladder. So you're throwing, you're going to throw all your formulas off. I don't want to put too much in. Yeah. Some people, some people think that a 24 quart machine, you put 24 quarts in. Yeah. But you know, you start with, that's not right. It's like whipped cream. Yeah. Yeah. You put that, you get two. Yeah, Need me? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, I do love these. Yes, they were the best. We ate them like one a week. <laughs> they were so good. No, they're really, they're really good. Oh. If you want some more, we'll send you some. Thank you so much. They're, they're really good. That's fantastic. Wow, hand delivered. You know, it's, it's so funny. I was telling Jeff yesterday, I said, you know, um, I started watching you years ago when it was lunch with the president, yeah. you know, long before he ever yeah. even came around. And I always thought, always thought, someday I'm going to have an ice cream store. Someday I'm going to have an ice cream store. I've been saying that for all these years yeah. to everybody. And um, and finally, my my wife and I said, well, let's just do it. We're going to do it. We're going to We're going to go right to lunch. Oh, really? I think so. It's it's 1130. Early. Do you want to do, are there going to be enough it's questions? No, show. no. Do you want to do questions? Well, it's usually going to take more than 15 minutes, right? Okay. And we may have to invent them. Well, that's all right. Well, I, I'm sorry. I've been accused sir, of a shortage of coffee. How was the Friday Frankenstein? Oh, my God. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Wow. Did you taste it? No, you didn't. Yeah, no, really no. I didn't, but I will. And to think it actually gets better when it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, take your seats. This is, uh, <laughs> this is what? This is, huh? this is what? Um, questions oh, answered. Wait, I'm going to bring my book in. I'm going to shamelessly sell now. All right. I'm going to bring my dog in. Sammy. Whoa. Good catch. Come on. Come on. Come on. What? More stuff for us. More stuff, yeah. I got it. Come here. Here we go. She doesn't do anything. She can sit here with me. Come on. Best sales marketing tool that's ever been. Who doesn't, you know? I, I, I can be the worst schmuck on earth, but uh, you put a dog on my lap and everybody likes you. <laughs> How old? She's four. Yeah. <laughs> He's just getting going. Okay, this is the time to answer. Uh, well, we'll answer. Well, maybe we'll. This is the time to ask questions on anything uh, related to anything. We don't care. No, any subject at all. Any subject at all. So let's start with you. What's your question? <laughs> You gotta give me some time to think about it. Uh, that never happened in the past. <laughs> in a minute. In a minute, yes, ma'am. This is Anita. Anita has the floor. Okay. This okay, that's here. enough from Anita. <laughs> this machine here and comparing, you've got automatic um, things on there to tell you what the speed is to make the different types of ice cream. How would I use this if I'm going manual? Because you don't have those same things. Now, didn't you work for two days, these past two days, on a machine that doesn't have... It's totally a manual machine. Didn't you work for two days in that? I did, but it was a lot bigger than this. Same thing, same process. The main, th uh, the main thing is the size of the machine. It's only three quarts, and so the cost uh, cost to buy it is a lot less. Uh, it's going to make super premium gelato and Italian ice. That's all. 
Yeah, it won't do homemade and it won't do custard uh, because those are at the extreme ends of the spectrum. But the products that you want to get, a, a real high quality homemade ice cream, the Italian ices, uh, gelato if you want to do it, uh, this is the ideal machine for it. We, we picked one speed and said this is what it'll be. So uh, it'll work just fine for you. Now you said it won't make custard. Isn't custard a, a, a product of the ingredients? No, it's all, well, yes, it's got, it's 10% fat, uh, rarely 12, egg yolks. and it's got, uh, I think it's 3.5% egg yolk by volume. Right, but it's a slower speed. It's a, it, and it's a, yeah, it's a very, very slow speed, so you're putting almost no air in it. So it's a very dense vanilla ice cream. I tell people who have never had frozen custard, because the only real frozen custard uh, comes out of, uh, uh, you know, started in Wisconsin. If you've never had frozen custard, buy some haagen put it into a dish, and swirl it like a little kid until it gets all soft and sticky and pulley. That's custard. That's, that's what you're eating. And it's a delicious product, but it's a limited market, mainly limited by its name. Um, most of the country goes, oh, custard. That's the stuff mom used to put into little glass jars and serve Except us for dessert. if you're in St. Louis, then, they then know you what can it is. see Ted Drew's. Anybody know about Ted Drew's? Frozen custard, uh, boy, he... And as, and as Culver's expands, more and more people are seeing what cu a custard is. So right. it's never going to be a huge market because it's, uh, it's um, uh, what you call in, in TV, uh, narrow casting. Uh, you're picking a very tight, limited market. They're, they're, they're fanatically, uh, fanatic fans, but there aren't enough of them. Uh, with homemade ice cream like Jeff's making, you've got the entire world open to you. Uh, with Italian ice, I've got uh, a product that I can serve on a hot day anywhere in any economic uh, background and sell it and make a profit. I can sell it at the Florida State Fair for $6 and make giant profits. Uh, I, I can sell it in a developing country for 50 cents and I'm still making a 40, 47 cents profit. So it's, it's, a, it's got a wide range of appeal to it being uh, Italian ice. And there is a third product in there. You have Italian ices, water, sugar, and flavor, and you have ice cream with ice cream. Can I go here? Sure. And you have ice cream with uh, the bladders that we use, the ice cream mix, and your ingredients. Mm -hmm. There is a middle ground. The middle ground, in my world, it was called cream ice, but it's also sherbet. Uh, if, but if you open up a store that sells <laughs> sherbet, nobody's going to come there because nice. the perceived value isn't there. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, down south runs a store called Cecily's Gourmet Italian Ices. They're not Italian Ices. All he sells is cream ice. But he knows if he put cream ice on the window, not going to have customer one. Who's going to walk into a store that says Cecily's Cream Ice? It, you know, no offense, but it's not going to work. And same thing with Italian ice. For everything except ice cream, there is some education of the public, right? Yeah. Uh, and also depending on where you are. If you're in the, the lower mountains of Utah and you open up a place Italian ices, I don't think you're going to make it. They don't know what Italian ices are. It's pretty much a northeast thing or east coast well, thing. Well, since we moved down here, it's, it's really coast, gotten, right. it's, no, it's really spread across the south, yeah, all the way to California. Not that major. A lot of people still don't know what it is. Yeah. 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 Sell, they, people say, I never had this before, and they love it. Once they try it, right. they have to so try it. Try it. Right. It's all from food. food. We call it water ice. Water, 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 water ice. Water ice. Yeah. That's because you're from Philadelphia. See, and also you open up a store that says water ice, the perceived value, they're not going to get $5 for a couple of that. Water ice, right. That's what they say, too. So that's why this guy called it gourmet Italian ice. Right. It's not a so I, about the name. I right. have started the, uh, the background work of uh, setting up another corporation uh, down in South Florida, and I've trademarked the name uh, Stefano's Brooklyn Italian Ice. <laughs> and the tagline that I've trademarked is, ice the way you remember it. Right. And it's going to be really high quality Italian ices. I'm going to sell it wholesale only uh, because unlike the ice cream, there's a unique market for it. If you want to have Italian ice in your pizza parlor, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, you've got to ship it down from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or Pennsylvania. That's the only source, and you've got to buy a thousand dollar minimum order. I'm going to have it locally, and we're going to deliver it locally, and it's going to make a killing. Right. Because I, I'm, I'm going to walk the walk. I've been talking about making 
uh, fortune for people selling Italian ice for years, and now I'm going to uh, do it for my relatives. I put them in charge. Made of it. enough money already, so I can stop. It's not that. <laughs> it's, it's putting people in the business. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm no, doing. I'm just joking, man. Uh, no, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> when, when someone tells you I'm doing okay, that, yeah. that's a tip off. But you know, the, the reason I want to do it, and the reason I like doing it, is, and all of you who go into Italian ice, if you have just a push cart. Uh, someone's gonna, people are gonna come up to you all day long and they're gonna say, I wish I could do this. And you're gonna, the first lie you're gonna tell them is, well, you can't, these recipes came from my great, great grandfather from Genoa, Italy, not some white Presbyterian from New Rochelle, New York. Um, so that's the first lie. The second lie is the truth. Well, you can't do this. It's a minimum order of $1,000. $1,000 worth of ice is gonna take up half this room, so you have to get freezer space. And the third answer, which is the right one, is you say to that person, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you my ice. Uh, here's, here's some literature on push carts, three different companies. You go buy a push cart, you call me on Tuesday, tell me how many lemon, cherry, grape, mango you want, and you can pick it up on Friday. Cash only, no credit cards, no open accounts, no broken promises. You have to pick it up so that I'm not wholesale, I'm retail. And you go sell it in your push cart and you, supply, you support your family. So I tell this to a guy, and, and he comes back a year later, and he says, oh, man, the ices are doing so great. I'm going to buy 10 push carts this year. And, you know, being a snide New Yorker, I said, oh, so I see you're going out of the ices business, and you're going into the push cart repair business. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you're, you're going to spend all your time repairing 10 push carts. Why don't you do my idea, and now you're supporting 10 families who are going out on their own and buying their own ices from you. You're the supplier. They don't have to ship it down and pay 80 bucks a tub because of shipping. They don't have to buy a $1,000 minimum order. They can buy four tubs for all I care. And we'll freeze it down to 10 below. We'll bring your igloo coolers. We'll put in your igloo cooler. You drive it 20 miles to your igloo cooler, and you're in business. I'm glad you said that. Let me ask you this, then. So if you're freezing it down to 10 minus 10 degrees, you know where you, you're going to run into a problem at, right? Not yet. Once you sell it to somebody, you got to explain to them how to be able to unfreeze it the right way yeah. for dipping purposes. Because most people are going to mess it up by leaving it out too long. They'll only mess it up one day. Yeah. Yeah, you, but I mean, if it melts, what I'm saying is if they let it freeze, like unfreeze from temperature and bring it to the temperature where they can dip it, that's where most people go wrong. Well, it's only, not too, only the first time. Yeah, because what you do is you take a $500 chest freezer like the one over in the side of the room and you turn it up to 10 degrees. And with my ice being all fresh and no chemicals, I'm going to scoop at 16. So for the next day and a half, I'm going from 10 below to plus uh, 10 or 12, and when I'm ready to take it out, it'll it'll be perfect. So you just put, you just take it and leave it in there and let it thaw out that way. Like, yeah. You ever, how long does it take to do that? Uh, anywhere from over, depending on the temperature, anywhere from overnight yeah. to 24 hours. Yeah. Didn't you ever have people over for dinner and you pull out the ice cream and you leave it on the counter, and women, ladies. Did you ever why, wonder why your uh, spouse, who won't do a thing in the kitchen, is so happy to scoop the ice cream? Because we know it's all melted around the edges and hardcore in the center. We're eating all the edges uh, while we're scooping the center for the guests. We're getting a double duty of ice cream. We're very conniving. Yeah, I've seen some it's, people do that, right? And then it melts from the bottom. Then they left with the ice at the top. So then it, the flavor drops. The sugar it's, it's, it's all the about the drops. temperature. Uh, whatever your scooping temperature is, take it to within yeah, five I, to I eight degrees. I know what you mean. Sometimes when I was a kid, you would buy the little cups in the, in the grocery store, supermarket, in the frozen area. And when you scraped it, what did you really want? The, the bottom. 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 But, but, but that's, that problem is because of trucking it down from Correct. New Jersey. Correct. Because the trucker is carrying uh, Little Jimmy's Italian ice. He's also carrying DiGiorno pizzas and Publix green beans or something like that. So they're all coming down the Jersey Turnpike frozen. He's worried about his uh, 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 diesel bill, so he turns off the reefer for three hours. The green beans melt a little bit. The DiGiorno pizza melts a little bit. Who, who cares? They'll refreeze and they'll but be back the to where they were. Marino's but ices. Marino's the ices, the flavor bleeds to the bottom of the camp. Right. So it's just a matter, we call it tempering. 
And if you do it in your home with your ice cream or your ices, you just put it in the refrigerator for an hour, hour and a half before you want to serve it, and it'll all warm up together. It'll all temper up together. In our store, uh, we open at 6, and the girls come in at 5. And what's the first thing the girls do? They put the hard flavors on the counter for 15 minutes. Tempers, otherwise they couldn't scoop it. Otherwise, they'd break their arm. They couldn't scoop it. Yeah. And I've been back there, and I can't scoop so it. It's too hard. It so it tempers for 15, 20 minutes, and it then won't. they put it back. And what see, keeps that, it... The ice cream is different, I think, than the time. No, the ices, won't, the ices won't separate either. They have probably separated before you got them, or they were mistreated uh, in, in transport. You know, your, your employee just told you that he made the delivery over to uh, Louis Italian Ice. He didn't tell you that he stopped off for an hour right. to visit his girlfriend and left everything <laughs> warming up. And then they put in Louis's freezer. Louis didn't look. He's too busy getting pies ready for uh, tonight for pizzas. And uh, then he finds out a day later, yeah, the flavors drop to the bottom of the can. Yeah, there's no doubt that any of the products, any frozen dessert could be mistreated. Right. And the result, just like the, the frost on top. You know, if you, you've eaten that, it doesn't taste very good. You've got frost and good ice cream. So anything can happen. That's why you have to focus on your product and take you care of it. Burton, your buckets, what you do? You, just, you don't get them or do you get them? So get what? The little frost that sits you No, I don't get them. Yeah. The secret yeah, to why I don't get them? Yeah. You want to know the secret to why I don't get them? It's fresh. I keep my ice cream in one gallon oh. container. Oh, yeah. Keep them open. What are these containers container. that you saw us working with today? Every batch, I get six to seven one-gallon containers, and we put them in our freezers that way. The surface area is very limited. A tub of three gallons is triple the surface area, and the tops don't snap on, uh, which is another reason why your dipping cabinets with 16 open tubs in your ice cream store, 16 tubs that are open, they open the, the top, and the air is running across 16 open tubs, because they don't have covers on them. They want you to see how pretty they look. So the air runs across there. They do that 100 times in a shift, in a day. That means that ice cream is subject to 100 rushes of air every day. You have to get ice crystals. It has to uh, impede the integrity of the ice cream. You're not going to get what you made. Simple solution for that is behind me. There's a small dipping cabinet behind me, and that's the what we call the old-fashioned floppy door cabinet. I'm sure they've got a real name. And those are fine. I call it the floppy door cabinet because they're not exposed to all the sun and every and this and all that glass area. I don't use the visual display cabinets. I like those. They hold their temperature better. They cost less. Uh, and, but you and go into the, every the ice cream store in the world. Not mine anymore. And, okay. we, we dropped it because the other problem we had is somebody in their infinite wisdom, which is a joke, uh, decided, let's give a free sample. And uh -huh. you wouldn't believe the, the old people. They come in and they get a sample because they found out you can get a sample. Well, let me try the mint chip. Oh, let me try the blueberry. Oh, let me try the raspberry. They're holding up the line, which is, which is the kiss of death. And then they're so full they walk out. You just want to get Let me try this. Yeah, so if you want a sample, buy a half pint. <laughs> It's his retirement give a committee card calling. <laughs> and it's not the guy who's asking for samples, it's the next person. Right. Yeah. Because now they're saying, well, screw that. I want to try the rum right. raisin. I want to try the chocolate chip. I want to. Right. And then the person the after them. Board. And before you know it, the people are online for 20 minutes. They're not happy. We stop giving out samples. Yeah, we don't give out samples. In fact, people ask me why. What about pan ice cream, Thai pan ice cream, where you put the, the dairy on there and you scrape it? You know, it's kind of fun to watch. Or the uh, night liquid nitrogen ice cream. Uh, they're both doomed to failure and they already have. And the reason is, if you watch a, a YouTube video on them, it takes about six and a half minutes to serve one customer. Six and a half minutes times ten customers, that's over an hour. And I'm not waiting an hour for anything. Do they charge more for that? I don't know. Because basically that's what it is. But, it, but it didn't, it, it's a nice show once, yeah. but then it, it's, it's doomed to failure because once you've seen it, you're not going to wait an hour. Yeah. And the nitrogen in Houston, those nitrogen stores, 
what, seven ninety five for a small one, mm. and it goes up to over almost twelve bucks for a large one, and then and then people were like waiting in line. They 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 go up there, they order, they take their money, and then they go sit out, and then you're gonna have to go wait for your ice cream. For and hope they don't lose you. And, and if you Google that nitrogen ice cream, if you Google that information, because Mary Googled that, and uh, it, there's so many people out there that's gotten sick and gotten hurt from eating that because yeah. of, because if that nitrogen actually gets in the ice cream, or sometimes it does, and you eat it, it can expand in your lungs and hurt you. So there we go. that's that's a bad deal. Bad deal. Okay, two quick shameless plugs. Come, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> shameless plugs. We shameless plug shameless. number one. one you no, know, didn't he run an? I got one question. I'm trying to make a See? living here, buddy. <laughs> but shameless <laughs> plug. He used to run an Irish bar in Manhattan. <laughs> what what dyes do you use in your tiny eyes? Do you use dyes? Dyes? Color color dyes. I do not. But if I did, oh, I would yeah. use Green Mountain flavors because they're all natural. Um, but I try not to use dyes. I'd rather explain to people why my product is pale pink instead of bright red. And if you ask a millennial, they already know it. They look at that and they say, oh, okay, that's good. I don't see that as Another bright red. Another reason against those 16 tub plastic top cases, homemade ice cream is basically Bland. beige. Yeah. Right. It's basically beige, except for the chocolate, beige. Right. So it's not visually appealing. Right. What they do is they add colors to it so that in, when you look at the 16 tubs, oh, green pistachio and bright red cherry and Superman has three colors and on and on. Right. Ours isn't like that unless we add fake colors, which I don't want to do. And millennials are always asking us, asking us for if we're going to have uh, dairy-free ice cream. Well, the, the, uh, the, the Italian ices are all dairy-free. It's right? not the same. Yeah. It's not the same at all. Let me. But it's not ice cream. But it's it, it's a frozen dessert. Oh, it so is. This is the greatest trend <laughs> that has ever come along. And and I've been around long enough that I've been through a lot of. I'm younger than Jeff, but I've been around longer. Uh, I've been through a lot of fads in my You're life. That time. much younger. Than <laughs> no, that much younger. I've been through a whole lot of fads, and this stuff is a trend. What it is, is uh, I have four millennial children. They're all uh, very well doing in business. And um, uh, if they come for Christmas dinner, I'll serve them haagen or Ben and Jerry because they grew up on it. It's what we, we put them in business. But in their own refrigerator, or their own freezers in, in uh, Denver and New York, uh, they're going to not have dairy ice cream. For some reason, the millennials have decided they don't like dairy. I spoke to one once and then decided not to talk to him anymore because they said they thought it was uh, just awful that uh, people were, you know, squeezing a cow every afternoon at four o'clock. And I said, you try going eight hours without going to the bathroom and see how you feel. Of course, that went over like a lead balloon. So I don't say that anymore. Uh, but they're not huge fans of dairy. So uh, I heard about uh, vegan ice cream, which is what we called it. And, and I repeat myself, but vegan sounds like an 87-year-old man who weighs 87 pounds, and you just want to buy him a good Ruth Chris steak because he looks so awful. Um, so vegan is not a good term to use. So, so millennials in Southern California came up with the term dairy-free ice cream. It's an illegal term. Briars can't use it because ice, the words ice cream, by defined by the federal government, is 10% fat or higher. But if you're a mom and pop store, even if you're 10 mom and pop stores, they're not going to come after you. If you're Briars, you have to call it dairy free frozen dessert. Uh, but this is nothing more than coconut milk, uh, cream of coconut, <coughs> sugar, and that's it when I make it. I mix those together, I throw in my, uh, my mint extract, my uh, chips, and I've got dairy free mint chip ice cream. Mine, after two years of practice, always comes out rock hard and crumbly and awful. Uh, Naomi Posner came up with this product that she uh, originally calls the name, uh, she pronounces it Mommies, which is Italian for mother, but it's spelled M-A-M-I-S. And she is also using the name now Froco for frozen coconut, F-R-O-C-O-N-U-T. Same stuff. And with this, I take a uh, pound of powder and a quart of water, and I mix it together, and now I can make any dairy-free ice cream in the world. This, this is just fantastic. How much does that make? Uh, as much, I don't know how much this bag makes. So you but it's a soft serve? Yes, they make a soft serve version of it. Uh, but it's fantastic. 
And Jeff started 20 minutes ago to tell you about his book and something <laughs> else. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> so, so, me ice cream with it's well, it's well, it's not ice cream. Well, Soft well, serve is an ice cream. It's not ice cream. And yogurt is not ice cream. It's not ice cream, but it's very popular. Um, but it tastes like ice cream, right? Well, it doesn't yes, taste it tastes like my ice cream. No, no. no I'm serious. If you put, it tastes if you go like into a, a Golden Corral or whatever, and they have the machine there, it's pretty good when you're there because you've just had all that greasy, junky, starchy food. But if you sit down with a, a plate of that and then try real homemade ice cream, different ball game. When people buy Italian ice, they don't really want dairy streets. No, but this is not this is not Italian ice. Dairy free is not Italian ice. Right, right. It may be dairy free, but, but it's not Italian ice. Like if you get gelato, right? They want the Italian ice with the uh, ice cream, but a lot of people don't want the dairy. The parfait, the Ralph's yeah, parfait. Exactly. So that would be great. For them. I got to interrupt for a minute because we're going to have lunch soon. But Jeff and I were talking six, ten months ago. And, and quite frankly, we're very proud of the fact that we have put so many people into business since 2007. There are just thousands of people who are you know, making incomes for their family. And Jeff was lamenting that, unfortunately, because of the uh, fire codes here and the fact that they we're in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Florida, there's no amusement parks here, not everybody can get here. And, and nobody knows where Fruitland, Florida is, unless you're retired, Fruit Loops. Um, so Jeff went back and he came up with a brilliant idea of how to get to more people. So tell him. Oh, segue? Hello. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, what I, can, yeah, I run a two-day course. You know that. I've been doing that for years and years, and it's excellent. Uh, well, you can ask the people here who've been with me for two days what they thought of it, and, and I didn't coach them. Uh, but... All the people, I get 20 emails a day from people all over the world who can't be here because they can't take time off from work, the expense of the airfare, they can't bring their spouse, they want to bring their partners or their kids. It's just too expensive because I charge a lot for that course. So I thought, well, why not have a course in a box? So what I did was, hold on, what I did was, I had a videographer crew, a video crew, come and videotape all 20 hours of the class three times, which we do every other month. And uh, we went through all this video, through the editing, and I came up with a series of five DVDs. By the way, your tour video D DVD is in there. Oh, wonderful. It's in there. So you get... Uh, like 10 hours of instruction on video DVD with a notebook guiding you through everything. Uh, you even get a diploma that you finish the class. You get a hundred, here are the five DVDs. You get a hundred laminated recipe cards. Every recipe I've got. Uh, the adult recipes, regular recipes, and it's all in there. And, uh, and uh, that's it, that's the class. Also, I sell my book. The, the one, the biggest thing I get, I, I talk to a lot of people, of course, all over the world every day, and uh, they, the only thing they know about making ice cream is that they love eating it. And, and it doesn't matter if you're working as an auto mechanic or a brain surgeon, they just want a change of business, and they just think that ice cream would be great, but where do I start? So we, I send them to our videos, and, and that's helpful, but uh, it's, it's not enough. And uh, I, I, my personal opinion is any place that you can get knowledge from is just going to uh, be a tremendous help. I'm going to do a, a trade show in a couple of weeks uh, up in Charleston. And people, it's all ice cream only. And people will be coming to it. And I tell them, listen, if you talk to people and you only come up with one or two new ideas, you've more than paid for your trip. And, and something like this, I had a, uh, a young lady that I was dating uh, once and she thought she wanted to get into the ice cream business. And so she came to my course in New York, and afterwards she said, you know what, uh, I've got my captain's license, I, I can run a tugboat, I don't want to work as hard as an ice cream parlor is. And so her decision was not to go into the business. I said, you know what, that's one of the best decisions I've ever heard. Sometimes the best decision is not to do something. But if you want to learn, you of you watching this, if you want to learn about the ice cream business, uh, it tends to be so secretive, and that's what Jeff and I 
you know, fight against every day. It's so secretive, you can't get the answers that you want. Uh, this course is going to give it to you. And those of you who in, the, in the audience today who have taken Jeff's course, I'm sure every one of you would agree that uh, Jeff is a, a fantastic teacher. He, he does a great job. And with that, we're going to break for lunch. So lunch is there. Come on up. We've got sodas. Uh, we'll bring in ice. And um, all those questions you wouldn't ask us while we're sitting here, I know you're going to run up and ask us. Here they come. Here they, here they the come. Questions. We might as well stand up. We're going to get us all good. OK. Uh, thanks for that. OK. What? <clears throat> Boy, he loves you. He likes you more than Steve. Okay, thank you. All right, so I I was asked, are we on, uh, oh, Yodi? Yep. Okay. Uh, I was asked last time to do a repeat segment of milkshakes. We sell about 20 a night in the store, uh, milkshakes. And uh, somebody had them yesterday. One of you guys had milk. You had milkshakes. How was it? Good. Outstanding. And the secret of milkshakes, it, who's a coffee drinker? You all drink coffee? Okay. Do you drink coffee with milk and sugar or sweet and low or whatever? When you have an ice cream place, instead of milk in your coffee, use this, and you can't drink anything else. So I thought about... Milkshakes. I want my milkshake to be the best milkshake in town, obviously. It has the best ice cream, so I want the best milkshake. So I came up with using this instead of milk. And, uh, whew. Uh, so the formula I use is we have ninjas in the store on the counter. <laughs> God. We have ninjas, and I put a line at 18 ounces. Now our shakes, uh, when we when we give a shake, it's the same six bucks, and any flavor you want. We have forty flavors going all the time, so any flavor. Uh, the the finished product, it's eighteen ounces of mix, and then two big balls of ice cream, and the finished product, we have thirty two ounce cups. Is that what you got? <laughs> The clear one. Yeah, the clear one. 32 ounces. Too much. Yeah. Just like that. It's 32 ounces. It's a quart. Remember when you were a kid, the quart of milk? This is a quart of milkshake. And it's, whoa. But, and on top of that, big thing of whipped cream, cherry on top of that, and a straw and a spoon. Right? <laughs> See, he's 20. He can do that stuff. We can't do that. Uh, but we're going to do it now. Uh, so this is what we made before. This is the first thing this morning, Frankenstein. I figure we use that. I don't know what else is in there, but we'll start with this, uh, and we'll see how it goes, okay? Anybody wants a milkshake? We'll see how this is. So the milkshake is, there's no line on his because he doesn't do it, but we're, uh, okay. Let's see. I'm going to make a single one. I should make a double one, shouldn't I? Cause help me out here. Okay. Double. <laughs> All right. This would be a single. And let's see. That's a single milkshake. We'll, I'm going to start with a single just to show you what we do in the store all the time for each customer. So that would be a single and then two helping healthy scoops of ice cream. And uh, that's about it. If they want a malted instead of a milkshake, we add a teaspoon of carnation malt powder, which is the standard in the world. In your store, of course, you can use a Hamilton Beach $1,100 multi-mixer or, uh, you know, all those other fancy ones. But um, 
This, how much is it, did you say? $70 Ninja is the best on the planet. Okay, so, let's see. We need a few tasters. I don't know what we'll get here. I made these little cups because you'll die if you have a big glass of it. <laughs> Did you have any shake yet? Okay. So that, that ninja is, um, is good for commercial use? <laughs> no, no. no. Just today. No. What's the difference between home use and commercial use? Nothing. More, more, more use. use. Volume? Yes. Well, we make 20 shakes a night, and our ninja so far has gone on seven years. I bought four of them at a flea market on sale, because the guy was selling them, and uh, I've still got the other ones left over. Okay. <laughs> See that door? I want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Bathroom? This is very binding. That chocolate is rich. All right, no. Don't say no. Billy, I've taken your lip all morning. You're going to drink my milk. people got a long way to go. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Why don't you try it? That's a Frankenstein milkshake. Don't give out any more. I'm keeping them all. This is great. Oh, it's got to be good, right? Mmm. I'll be right back in. Boy, we should sell milkshake shots like this size. Two bucks, right? Two bucks, right? For a milkshake shot. Yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, remind me. Re remind me of the word flight. F L I G H C in one minute. Yeah, man. Don't say no. Flight. Flight. Go get it, Gary. No, no. I know, right? <laughs> okay, we need one, two, three, four. Oh, yes, you do. Of course you want one. Yeah, she does. One, two, three. I'll make another batch. I think it'll go. Yes. You make the milkshake with steak and steak and steak. Steak and shake. It's like a steak and shake. Steak and shake makes a damn good milkshake. They do. Every now and then I give one. I was like that too. I can't. I Almost good catch. I want to know if he has his employees pull out the ladder every time. No, haven't. Well, you want to know if I have my employees what? If they have to pull out that ladder every time they want to make a shake. No, we yeah, have it. Good girl. The girls pull. What are the girls store these in? Washington. Arizona, Arizona, Arizona iced tea buckets, you know, with the screw. Perfect. I only need 5%. But you know, you should label those things. Why? It's only got mix. I know. Yeah. What? We were just saying if you open your fridge door, it looks a little funny with the water. Yeah. 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 I don't worry about it. I don't worry about a lot. <laughs> Mike, did you get any yet? No, sir. <laughs> Mike, would you like? Mike said yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you said that real fast, Mike. Mike, can you leave the board for a minute? Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I mean, I was smoking a lot for a long, long time, but I'm going to No, so he'll make an exception. <laughs> hey, Mike, that's your brother. 
All right, I'm going to uh, get my act together real quick and we're going to make some pumpkin pies. Pumpkin pie ice cream. I need a can opener. Thank you, Mike. I don't think it's going to be a I got your number, don't worry. I got three. Anybody? Everybody have? Every, you okay? I want to make sure this door stays closed. I want to make sure that... Really? Paula's milkshake. Oh. <laughs> Went to the airport. Oh, okay. Didn't put in the freezer. Hi, guys. Okay, how about some pumpkin pie ice cream? Try milkshake? Hey, seasonal. Try milkshake? Yeah. Pass those around. Pie crust. Let's see, five quarts of ice cream. I'm going to put this away. You know, I could sit down with a spoon, Steve, and just eat this. Mm -hmm. I mean, who said I couldn't? How much money you got in your pocket? How much money you got? What? No way. You got to be kidding, really? It's a gallon. It's a gallon. And I can sit down with a spoon and finish it. Don't tell me I can't. Jimmy, I can do it. All right, double down. Let's put some money on this. That's what counts. This is the show. I wouldn't be able to finish it. Oh, yes, I can. You got to believe me, I can eat a gallon. Come on, sweetie. July 4th. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I won't do it now. I don't, I don't want. I want my 501 song. I want to wear my my Levi 501. <laughs> You ready? You ready for this? You ready? I don't eat ice cream. So how do you know what it tastes like? I mean, you seem like you were passionate about what you make. So tell her how How do you know if you don't taste it? You taste it. You taste it. You say, oh, you say, this needs more. Do you think about walking when you go down the street? I had a can opener. You don't think about walking. All right, so it's just routine. Oh, yeah. I know my recipes. But I, I like today we made stuff here. I tasted a little bit of each one. But I didn't eat near what you ate. <laughs> but you know what they're saying now, right? What? They dumb it down to um, the ingredients that you're putting in, like the companies. They're not as putting as much 
Uh, ingredients in it. Why not? That's what they said. Like, a lot Who of said that? Saying, that. saying what? Like I rice bake tax. They're based on taste like it did six months ago. Taste I wouldn't know that. I never I'm used their so stuff. What? I'm just using that where's an example going? with the rest of Wait, where's it going? <laughs> I don't know, so don't oh, ask oh, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What was the last thing in there? Do I need to rinse it? What are you making? Pumpkin pie? Absolutely not. No? Nope. Okay. Oh, a, 20, a 24 quart, huh? Look at you. Well, oh, that's because you want to keep some of this around for the holidays. And stuff, right? Yeah. I hope I have enough. You want me to do that? Sure. Yeah, I figured you would. Well, I'll start. Why don't you get a good can open here? I'll tell you which one's all smart. Um, okay, so I'm going to add the ice cream mix into here. Right. Now you're 36 ounces, you're one quart short. You have nine in there. That's fine. I can, I can afford to be one quart short. By the way, when you're making holiday ice cream, he, he was smart. I'll see you, Bill. Just get text me. All pumpkin. 100% pumpkin. Don't buy pumpkin pie filling. Looks the same in the cans. Just get real pumpkin. This is 100% pure pumpkin. All natural, no preservatives. Well, that's because of my wife. <laughs> and What's the, difference the cost. No, I'm just curious. No, I don't think they know because the ingredients are just pumpkin. Okay. Ingredients: organic so pumpkin. This one: ingredients: yeah. pumpkin. <laughs> Some people. <laughs> okay, so I've got my mix in there, and we're gonna put in the pumpkin. Uh, let me get a big spoon. See how good my can opener worked in this store? Yeah, I, 10 years it took me to find that can opener. You want to know which one I use? Okay. This? Yeah, it's the best, the best. You want to know which one I use, right? So what else? Oh, I know. What brand was it? She knows. You know. She knows. It's Hamilton. Huh? Hamilton. It's a Hamilton. Is it it's, it's buy it's more? Yeah. I, if only if we need it. We'll see. Oh, we'll need it. Yes, we will. Well, more is better. So those two guys left, right? Yes. Tell the class who he was. Um, he flew in in one of his aircraft. He owns most of, uh, well, no, I don't want to say that on tape. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I can't tell you. you. Need, here's a spatula up here for you. All right. I got it. Go ahead. One of his aircraft. One of them. He borrowed mine. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, but he, but he landed at my airport. <laughs> we are so full of it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see Slade here. I haven't either. He's in today. He's somewhere. Mike, have you seen Slade? Yes, sir. He's been around all day. Oh, okay. You want to tell me when to stop? Oh, I don't, what is your formula? Uh, how many ounces of those? 21? 15. 15. And we put in one, two, three, four cans. 60. 60 is uh, uh, 16, 30, 60. One more can and then we'll try it. That'll be four pounds. That's what my original theory was. What, four pounds? No, four cans, uh, these many cans. <laughs> these many, four. <laughs> hey, whatever happened with that scoop that I bad mouthed? I haven't tried mine yet. 
No good, They won't huh? use it. They won't use it. Wow. Beautiful to look at, though. Yes. What else are you putting in here? Some cinnamon, maybe? Yes. Just opening it up. This is an ice cream. This is pumpkin ice cream, but I'm going to put it into these pie shells. This is handy. Yes. What do you want to do with this? Whatever you say. It's cinnamon with sugar. With sugar? Yeah. Cinnamon sugar? Yeah. Hmm. So you might need a lot of it. Well, we'll try two. See what happens. Anything else going on in this? No. Anything else going in here? Or is that all you call for? Um, let me check my recipe. Oh yes, a little vanilla. Okay. A splash or two. And then I was going to see if I wanted to add a half a pound of sugar, if it needed to be sweeter. So, we'll taste it. Compared to what? The older we sing as well. Well, you're doing Italian ice, so it makes no difference at all. Um, just with ice cream. Because you have high air content ice cream, usually high air, high fat. Uh, we make high air, low fat, and then there's super premium, which is lower air, then there's gelato, which is lower, and then there's custard, which is very low. So, and as you go lower, uh, it costs more and uh, to, to produce, so you have to get a higher price for it, and it also s tends to sit like lead in your stomach. And we're going to use these pie crusts. Um, these are just the Keebler graham cracker pie crust. I thought it would be a good idea the first time I made this to freeze these because, you know, it's cold. Well, no, if you freeze these without putting the ice cream in there, they crack. They just crumble to death. So leave them at room temperature. The nice thing about this is we'll not only have uh, the pie shell for the pumpkin, but we can use the plastic uh, as a lid when it's all finished. And these are great to sell in a retail That's store. That's how they make them for that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and um, you can even leave the advertising in. Um, but these are fantastic to sell. Do you want to try it and see what you think? Try what? The ice cream? I did. Yeah? That's why I'm adding more pumpkin. Oh, okay. Um, the nice thing about these, let's say you get $20 or more for one of these pies. Uh, people really feel like they're getting their money's worth because, you know, after dinner, you cut a slice. Uh, if you're like me, 11 o'clock at night while everybody's gone to sleep, you come back out and you cut a quarter-inch slice. And you can take quarter-inch slices, you know, for several nights and no one's ever going to notice. And they say, oh, where'd the pie go? Well, you ate it for dinner. So, like I said, us men are conniving. We're always thinking, but only about food or food and one other. True. <laughs> Any questions so far? How many does it make, Steve? I see your recipe here. Um, how many of them pies would it make? Oh, I didn't buy enough, so no, I, I, know. I don't know the answer to that because oh, I've got oh. five gallons oh, okay. of ice cream. It would have made a lot more. Yeah. Thanks. What did I do with that other? Oh, here it is. When I'm looking for these, I'll move to see you. All right, I'm going to start the refrigeration. But this is a great seasonal product. Oh. We recycle these too. A lot of pumpkin. The pumpkin is a subtle flavor. It is. That's why we may need some uh, additional sugar. 
Can you use some pumpkin extract? Uh, I'm not using pumpkin extract. I used uh, pumpkins. Um, you can get cinnamon. You can get cinnamon sugar, which is cinnamon and sugar. You can get uh, pumpkin spice. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. Uh, we're just trying this this recipe for the first time, so we'll we'll critique it. Go for it. Yeah, that's Jeff. <laughs> Too much is never enough. Too much is never enough. Or to quote Bob Seger, I wish I. Don't worry about it. I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Oh, that's good. That's real good. That doesn't need sugar. Do you think? I don't. Okay. What, what would you do? I would add more. Of that? Yeah. Go ahead. Can't hurt. Go for it. Just a dash. The whole jar? No, just a dash. Okay. So if you want to put it on your recipe, let me just, I got to keep these jar cans for Paula. You have to keep the cans? Yeah, for Paula. These cans? She recycles them. Um, this is called cinnamon sugar. So what we put in there is cinnamon sugar. Yeah, not don't just use cinnamon, that. But just cinnamon get cinnamon. I like the cinnamon sugar. And how many ounces is this thing? Well, it's a small bottle. I can see you're all falling asleep. <laughs> this is the last ice cream and then you can go home. You know, did you ever think you were gonna come to a class and say, no, I don't want any more ice cream? <laughs> Jeff and I used to actually ask people, we'd say, hey, how about we make one more? And they'd all go, ugh, <laughs> you know? So we kind of learned, don't ask. You recycle this too? Yes, yes. And I bet the organic was Paula, right? Of course. Well, I bought it for Paula. Sammy's having the organic. In your store, when you're running them off, they make these pie shells with graham cracker crust or Oreo cookie crust. They're 99 cents at our friendly Walmart. And if you, it's a piece of cake to fill them, as you'll see. If you fill off a couple every time you make ice cream, throw them in the freezer and sell pies for 10 bucks, you're good. You make lots of money, especially if you take credit cards because then they don't care what they're spending. We got a bingo. Brilliant. Brilliant. Next year, what am I going to do with all the money? I don't know. Man. Jeez. I might have to buy an airport like you did. Unbelievable. Why is this here? I got to tell you, this is quite the invention. Yes. Why did you take the pie it? show off? So in case it falls from the vibration, I don't lose a whole pie. Well, you can do this and it won't fall. Uh, well, I also have to check the ice cream. Ah. So it's oh, okay. Place okay. For it. Okay. Because that's what I do when I fill pies. I get a, a bucket, turn it upside down, and fill the pies. Ah. And you have the tops. Right? Here now we have the adjustable shelves. Stop. And you know what else I noticed? This. Yeah. yeah. Come on, I don't miss anything, you know. I want that. <laughs> you do? I like that. And also, uh, no, I have that. But I, I like this. Why'd you do this? For, for feel? Yeah. It's a nice thing to grab. Right. Now, is yours just a bar? Yeah. Oh, I'll change yours. How are you going to do that? It's the whole thing. Yeah. Huh. And you know, of course, I don't have this. I have, oh, it's blue? When did you do that? Isn't that cool? When did you do that? It's just for the smaller machines, but it's from the, uh, I took it from the uh, 57 Chevy. I have this on my machine. I don't have this. I have this. But mine isn't blue. Oh. Mine nice. is just blase chrome. Oh, okay. Blue is nice. <laughs> Your 24 has that? 
Yeah, you I gotta ask them why they're putting this on. You put it on for me. Yeah, okay. When I when I bought the machine in the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a long, strange trip it's been, huh? Yes. Be right back. Any uh, Q and A? I'll provide the A. Question. Why are you provide? Yes. What's the difference between custard and um, soft serve? Egg yolks. And it's made at a slower speed. <laughs> now you can get around that. Mm -hmm. I rice. I Rice Company makes a fabulous product called Bavarian Base. Bavarian Base. And it's a number 10 can of egg yolks. Okay. And you make your proportions. I have, you guys got a recipe for custard, and the proportion is what you make it. But if you add that, what I used to do is I used to simmer egg yolks on the stove for hours at a very low speed, mm -hmm. constantly whisking. Then I'd had a cool overnight because it was a huge pot, and then I would add it to my ice cream to make custard. Then I discovered I rice. As a matter of fact, now you can buy in the supermarket a container like a milk carton of egg yolks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and just get your proportions right. Test it and see how it is and that'll be custard in this machine. Mm -hmm. okay. It won't be, won't be cores, you know, K-O-H-R cores, mm -hmm. cores cut, but it'll be close. When I make custard, it's really good. Okay. So you can run it at the lowest speed on his uh, here. Do yeah, but I don't have the speed, so I make it in my machine. Works okay, just don't tell Steve. Oh. That's funny. I just said that to Mike. I said, <laughs> don't, tell don't, Jeff. don't tell Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are we doing? There was a question for you. Anybody? Oh, well. That's okay. You can ask Jeff. It won't hurt my feelings that bad. You clean your machine at the end of the day. Okay, so after the, I don't have to do it because he has his peeps that do it. They come in and they clean the machine. But cleaning the machine, what it take us? Ten minutes. Ten. It's a piece of cake, and and it's a great pride. And also the next day when you come in, you're ready to roll. That was great. Next day we were ready to roll. Pour it in, let's go. That's it. Pour it in and go for it. Uh, and cleaning it is no big deal. You sanitize. You rinse it. You take out the parts, put them in your big sink, clean them up, uh, put them back in, sanit out. run a thing of sanitize through it, and you're, okay, you're ready you. to go. Ten minutes. Sammy can come out. So it's uh, pretty good. On your DVDs that you got just now, there's a whole section on cleaning your whole kitchen, but especially the machine. Any questions? Killing me here. <laughs> right. Good point. It's, no, it's ice cream. It's simple stuff. Buy the ingredients, put it in the machine, sell it. Leslie. We were analyzing higher quality versus kind, so if you decide you want to make something in house, for example, is that getting the egg yolks, you're actually getting it up to the temperature. How do you analyze if you use a bunch of things or did you I started supermarketing out of ignorance. I never knew any other way. You know, I sat where Bob is sitting back there the first time, and I watched Steve create his his ice creams. And yes, I did say, if that idiot can do it, I can do it. But that's not the point. The point is, when I left here, I didn't know about those cans and jars and jugs, and I had a machine. So I just went to the supermarket because I didn't, I didn't know. And I went up and down the aisles thinking what would make great ice cream. M&M's, boy, M&M's got to make great ice cream. Oreos, Famous Amos, uh, cake mixes, uh, candies, anything, coconut. And I bought all the stuff and then I tried it and I found out that it's good and it tastes like growing up when I was growing up. So that's why... Steve credits me with changing the industry a little bit, going a little, supermarketing, a lot. 
instead of buying, uh, what does it say on the book? Who's got the book, Andy? Where's your book? On the cover, it says, make incredible ice cream without buying jugs, cans, or jars of fa flavors or colors. Go supermarketing. Here we and go. That's what I do. Keep talking. Keep talking, but here we go. I guess I'm going to need a spatula. Oh, that's beautiful. Right on top is a spatula. Okay. Oh! Move over. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? How many pies you want? I only have four. Okay, move that, that glob. I could have done that. Well, you didn't tell me what to do. Okay, you want all four pies? Yeah. You want that? Looks better with the orange stuff in it. It is kind of cool. Yes. You get actually 20, 24 quarts of product, right? Mm hmm. If you measure exactly that thing you were saying before you make it, you get exactly that back out. You would put 12 quarts in to get 24 quarts of ice cream back. Italian ice, you have to have some room for expansion. So you're going to do um, uh, 16, 17 quarts. 16, 17 quarts. No, 16, 17 quarts of product. Sugar, water, flavor, the total. Okay, what do you think? Now let's see how good you are, those of you who are with me this week. How much are we going to make on this? Fifty dollars. Make fifty bucks. The net profit on each one of those is fifty bucks. Of what? The top, these ice cream. Oh, the ice cream. Ow. Okay, this is it. Your last chance to have ice cream. Come on up. Don't all move at once. See, you're full. Even if you think you don't like pumpkin, you got to try it. It's good. Uh, half that. Half of this? Just half that. This oh. oh, yeah. Good. Where'd my assistants go? They went to the airport and didn't come back. I'll bet they went flying. That's what I I put graham crackers in my in the machine. I don't sprinkle. I just add. I throw graham crackers in there. Yeah, like if you do a Sunday. What? If you do like a Sunday with your son, like a little graham. She has lost her video. I tried telling her. Yeah, I throw them right in for the flavor. Just for the flavor. That's enough. That's enough. Thank you. 
small one. So what you're saying is that in this case is about the, the private cost is about 20% of the gross. So if you sell it for 50 and you pay 10 for this, you're looking at about a 20% cost of ice cream cost of gross sales. Um, I don't know, the numbers guy, he's the numbers guy right there. What? What do you mean? They're not liking the formula. Really? Yeah. No, uh, you mean for nutrition labeling? No, except you mean for wholesale? For retail, no. Not for retail. For wholesale, you don't have to, but everybody reads everything so much and then ignores it that people do it anyway. It's uh, The cost of labeling has gone way down. It used to be you had to, uh, you, there was like oh, oh, two labs oh. in the country. And you were, you know, spending a fortune to get it. You know, bur they actually burn it. That's how you calculate BTUs. And um, it was a real Got pain it? in the neck. Yeah. Yeah. But I need more of these for. The you other need tub. what? I didn't put these on the other tubs. So you've gone from adoring fans who think the two of us are the greatest in the world to, ah, you know, it needs more ice. So, you know, you're, 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 ju you're just like my relatives. The first time I brought ice cream, it's vanilla. It's Steve, we love you. It's great. The second time I bring ice cream, Steve, it's, it's good. It needs a little more vanilla. The third time, it's for God's sake, Steve, can't you make anything other than vanilla? But I'd like to remind you that we didn't hear those comments after my stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, who is there putting in all the ingredients today in my pumpkin? <laughs> you know, I pumpkin, saw this coming and I didn't want to take the heat. Let me tell you, pumpkin is a very interesting flavor. It's delicate. It's like on the other side of the world, it's like peach. It's very hard to get strong peach flavor. In the store, when we make pumpkin, we make pumpkin maple walnut. So we get maple syrup in there. You know what? I saw maple syrup here. Yeah. Where did I see it? Uh, right here? No, no. We had it. We, if we had added maple syrup, mm -hmm. we would have had a winner. I think if we hung out with a better class of people, they wouldn't be annoying so much. <laughs> a better class of people? He knows how to get a customer. <laughs> well. You know, see, let me, tell you, let me talk about focus. I didn't focus today and I forgot something. When we made milkshakes, the theme was Halloween. And I was going to make vampire shakes. And I brought, to add to my Frankenstein, I brought maraschino cherries and cherry juice. Oh. And I didn't focus and I forgot. What's that? I so said, we missed out. You need to do that over <laughs> So you see how important it is? I, I forgot the main, one of the main ingredients in my milkshakes. Imagine how good it would have been with some cherry, maraschino cherries crushed up and some cherry juice. Whew, sorry. Oh well. Um, I'm gonna give you a tour of the factory now, but before we go, uh, Jeff was looking at my machine and coveting the fact that his handle wasn't as nice as this. I don't have with that. With a little knob on it. I like that. Well, there you go. Oh. oh. oh there we go. And if you're looking oh. for a discount, forget about it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs>